and welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast. Filmed in glorious grapple vision and encoded in glass processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines pay per view by pay per view. This is your host. No, oh, it's not the Golden Augers. I can't use that joke again. <laughs> Jay Hunter. <laughs> Joined as ever by Mr. OC. Alright. And V1. Alright. Tonight, it's part two. No, it's actually part four. It's a Star Wars. Fucking. I should script this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's another QA mailbag, part four, five, and six, and it's coming up right now. Tonight contains material of a graphic nature. Viewer indiscretion, I mean viewer discretion, is advised. Welcome, doggers! Happy days are here! How's it going, lads? <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> Alright. Back in the saddle once again. A new year is upon us, a new story arc. Um, but before we start that, we thought we'd do a little QA. Uh, we asked fans, and we've had well over 500 questions, which is completely awesome. That blows my fucking mind. That's crazy. But uh, that's far too many questions. As well. So we're going to pick and choose, uh, group some together, and other questions were answered in last year's Q&A. So if, it's, if we don't answer it, it's, it's probably in there. Or we've already answered it today. It's like a duplicate of... Ah, uh-huh. What's in Q&A 1, 2, and 3? Answers to... Victor Basildua's and Andrew Dean's Whatever happened to the other one of you who was quiet and prone to just rambling on by himself? He seemed to vanish. <laughs> Light streaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Q&A. Check our q and I've actually added timestamp for all of the questions in the description box. Fuck so. off. Yeah, yeah. Busy boy. Uh, yeah. need a timestamp. In the description box, you can add a time, and when you click on it, it'll go to that time in the oh, video. Oh, wow. That's... Hmm? Holy shit, that's yeah, like... Well done, it's the type of thing you should get a fan to do for you. Mm. But then it's like, okay, I'll do it. If you do Survivor Series. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's get busy. Wuzzle wuzzle, I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> wuzzle wuzzle. <laughs> Uh, oh, a quick, uh, how is the show made? Well, you can find a much longer, meteor version, Q&A 1, but basically the three of us get together, record a podcast, you guys do whatever it is that you do when you're not around me, <laughs> and, I, and I edit the show and put it up. hey <laughs> So basically Jay's saying, I do fucking everything. Yeah, he's not denying that. It's true, Steve. <laughs> I do slightly more than not receive. <laughs> Oi, what do you do? I review games. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> oh, before we start, I just wanted to thank the people who helped the show, because there's a lot of talented people who watch our show, and they just add their talents to the show to make it uh, just a little bit more awesome. So, big thanks to Luke, Rory, and Dalvin from Polydorver Wrestling and OSW Chat. Um, they help me with researching all the shows. Chris McClay, uh, soundcloud.com forward slash cmstrike. Uh, he did the ECW version of our Acceptable in the 80s. It's awesome. Right, yeah, it's awesome. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Chris from Reload Last Save, he does uh, just a lot of the animations and graphics like, like Halloween Havoc, the Super Mario World. That was him, he did that for us. Oh, Michael Scully from At Fizz vs. The World. He does uh, a lot of graphics and animation for us as well. Like he animated um, Juggernaut and Fucking. Oh, Alright, you bloody wanker! <laughs> <laughs> he animated that, it was awesome. Not and, him, by the way, he's great. Yeah. <laughs> the woman who drew it, actually, Stephanie O'Donnell, crownofdunnygold.com. Um, she actually drew that. Mustard Choppy! Mustard Choppy! <laughs> Holy shit! Mrs. Choppy! Uh, Mrs. Choppy! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! See? All of them full circle. Uh, she actually drew all those characters and stuff for us. Wow! So, uh, man, it was amazing. Another guy that does a lot of artwork for Steve Yurko. Uh, he did like uh, the Randy Orton Snake Charming segment. It was just incredible. Oh, at Calzo. Uh, Calzo Houdini, he actually runs uh, our website. 
He's the guy that's responsible for making you look so awesome. It's great. He is a golden nugget. Absolutely. All of these people are. All of everyone's. <laughs> 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 Uh, Squared Circle Tees, uh, they're guys that make our t-shirts, our awesome t-shirts, uh, so thank you Kevin. Um, oh, um, The Happening was actually, most of it was edited by, at Raven's film, uh, Nick Michalak, uh, which did an amazing job with Phenomenal, it. Um, yeah. Oh, and uh, the music that played us in was done by Kenny and Harley Wooden, who are awesome. And they actually did our Metal Gear outro as well. Which is also amazing. Um, some of the later ECW shows we had. Uh, we have like place cards at the start and it's like kind of figures like with Bobby Lashley on top or something and that's done by Daydream Figures so thank you Brad oh actually um, Fraser Davidson he a graphic designer and he just said hey uh, I did this uh, for OSW and it was, a, it was an OSW title belt did you oh see I've it? seen it gorgeous I want it <laughs> you get Niall to a uh, laser print <laughs> <laughs> He actually made us a couple of uh, like t-shirt designs as well. Man, a really talented dude. Oh, nice. Oh, Chris Mastro here uh, at daddydoyle.com. He made um, uh, uh, Becky Lynch. Remember when we were just... <laughs> yeah, uh, her, her head on a, like, a screensaver background to the Irish flag? That was him. <laughs> Marked out to that, actually. Actually, uh, man, we got uh, a lot of love for our last review, the Halloween Havoc 95. Uh, I'm a cocky, but it was a great episode. <laughs> it really was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, then. Um, yeah, it was a crazy show. Jeez, it's a very stark difference between ECW and WCW. Been a few years apart, you know? Yeah. Want to do more. Yeah, I will be back at some Absolutely. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, before we get into some Q&A, how about uh, we'll just go through uh, ooh, some statistics and stuff like mm-hmm. that from a, a, um What's they call it? The year-end, what companies do at the year-end? Like a, a lot uh, of stuff, like, yeah. uh, like financials? No, uh, I was going for some kind of... Well, uh, zero. <laughs> 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 Our videos are unmonetized. We, we owe money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's go through some milestones. Anyway, so 21st of February, two days before the WWE Network launch, WWE blocked 27 of our videos, uh, despite making 100% of the ad revenue. Like that's that's being cunty and being stupid, because you're cutting away money for yourself. It's probably not loads, but it's some. And free advertising. Uh, June 14th, massive milestone. Paul Stevens at Bruins217 got an OSW review tattoo. Unbelievable. Amazing. And then us goading fans to get more <laughs> tattoos. And them calling our bluff and getting them. <laughs> and then us quickly retracting <laughs> everything that we did. Would, would you get an OSW tattoo? Yeah. No. no. I don't have any tattoos, so... Mm. It takes something special for me to get a tattoo. But I probably wouldn't get... Yeah, you're right. But I, I, if I was to get a tattoo, it would have been the rocks, probably. Mm-hmm. But I would have got it when we were, like, 17. Mm. Not together, but unless you wanted to get a tattoo. Like, you know. yeah. I've always thought about getting a kind of Coke tattooed. I do like Coke. You would love the Coke. Do you know that's why Punk got a Pepsi tattoo? It's because his best mate got a Coke tattoo. Yeah. Oh, in September, OSC went to America. And so since we're not ever doing any proper OSW episodes without you or you, it's always going to be the three of us, uh, myself and Vwalt started reviewing games and films and current WWE pay-per-views as well. Mm. I know oh, that's done. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the rumble. I'll see. I'll see. In 2014, we did 12 OSW reviews. That's crazy. We've never done a, like a one per month before. I was like, I got it in on the, the last one on the 30th. And I was like, oh, in the face. Because it's usually every six weeks or mm-hmm. so. Um, yeah, so six ECW, three current WWE pay-per-views, three Brucey bonuses, Scooby-Doo, Capital Carnage, and Halloween Havoc. 
And then we had that chat about Cena. Got three Metal Gears, two WWE horror films, and one happening. Which is a whopper episode. It I loved it. It is. It's I a great it. episode. It's my favourite episode. Yeah? It is. Wow. So now that's OC, you're back in the saddle. Mm-hmm. We've gotten the happening and Halloween Havoc under our belts. Uh, we'll be concentrating on old school pay per views from now on, namely the X7 story arc coming up, which is Royal Rumble 2001, No Way Out 2001, Final Nitro, Simulcast Raw, and WrestleMania X7. I worry about it. Worry about doing these shows? And them not being good, like. No, and them being too good. And on the flip side, going, oh, it's not actually as good as I remember it was. I think that's very, very possible. Mm. I think we're, I think we're going to be shocked at how bad Attitude Era undercards were. Mm. This is two thousand one, not ninety nine. No, you're also correct there. Shit, this is like Angle and shit, isn't it? Mm. Angle, <sighs> Benoit, Jericho. We haven't done a Benoit show yet, have we? Oh, uh, we did. On yeah, one it, stands, yeah. yeah, with the the terrible match against mm. uh, Eddie, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it, it'll be nice to do a great Benoit match. Since we've gotten all that shit out of the way, yeah, it'd be great to do an actual top quality Benoit match. Like. Uh, so it's possible we could do some current pay reviews, but it's probably unlikely. Just don't have the time to do. Okay, some more stats for OSW. Okay, we're just going from kind of January 1st, 2014 to January 1st, 2015. Um, views wise, we went from 1.1 million to 6.5 million. Wow. Holy shit. Wow. And that doesn't count audio. Audio is another like, million and a half or something. Wow. Um, oh, Facebook. We doubled our fan base from 4,613 to 9,880. We're so close to 10,000. I, I said to Jay back in June, do you think we'll get to 10,000 by the end of the year? He's like, nah, nah. We are fucking so close. We're like 40 away yeah. or something yeah. like that. God damn it. But we went up a lot in the last two weeks or something like as well to go oh, ah. <laughs> you just you just can't do like 50 in a day or you might get 20 in a day yeah or you know oh on twitter it's uh, the same we went from we doubled uh went from 4590 to 10544 uh on youtube saw the biggest increase from 4855 to 27,600 <laughs> holy shit we oh we actually broke 28,000 today actually ha <laughs> that, that's awesome uh, ooh fans so uh, how many of our fans are female what percentage six I, I was thinking under five and Steve is bang on six percent wow that is up one percent from last oh, year oh, yeah. oh, we're with it with the ladies hello here. ladies yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um 52% are in our own age group, which is 25 to 34. Pretty much exactly what I thought. Yeah, that, that, that's great. 28% skew younger, 18 to 24. And 15% skew 35 and older. Which is great. People older than us listen to us. Mm, that's that crazy. Awesome. Uh, what country is watching our show? Of course, um, 45% are Americans. Sorry about giving us all the go. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. Actually, we've been kind of easier going lately haven't we it's because Vince we haven't been dealing with Vince's patriotism yeah probably it's only yeah. when he's like ah, support America buy our pay per view that we just start lamping into Americans yeah, yeah. that's actually yeah, yeah. Uh, 26% from the UK and then 6% are in Canada hmm? 4% are in Ireland I'm kind of shocked at that why I, th- I suppose Ireland's yeah, a tiny country yeah I thought it would have been less and then we got Australia, Mexico, Germany, India, New Zealand, Italy, and like an, another hundred countries before we get to nine South Africans. Shit. The Turn them all better. off, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> For promises of breakfast rolls. You and I was, went to your fucking country twice as well. <laughs> Can we have some pyrotechnics display? <laughs> no. <laughs> no pyrotechnics. <laughs> well, there's no need for that. <laughs> Um, ooh, our most popular episodes. What's our most popular? Oh, that's an easy one. It's like Survivor I'm Series sure it's or something, it. is it? No, what's the big one? Oh, Scooby-Doo. Oh, Scooby-Doo, yeah. yeah, yeah. 824,000. And still going. Get to the million, or get to the million. Yeah. I can't believe that. I thought it would have stopped. Because kind of, yeah. it's not, not relevant. Do you know what I mean? Like, but, so. Yeah. I suppose it's always relevant. I didn't know Scooby-Doo were huge then, you know? Yeah, he's still popular. 
<laughs> no, obviously not if you're doing WWE shows. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take anything. Um, oh, Night of Champions, 442,000. Hell in a Cell, One Night Stand, uh, WrestleMania 1, WrestleMania 9, Rumble 91, Mania 6, Rumble 1990, and Slambury. Nice. Excellent. Bit of fucking WCW gang in there. I like it. <laughs> See, a lot of these WWE shows, even though they'd be more popular, they'd be out a lot longer as well, mm. so they just get transient views as well. Yeah. So. But like Heatwave 98, one of our best shows. It's up. It's got to 100,000, yeah. did it? Oh, yeah, it's about 120. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see you getting a bit more yeah. uh, of a push because one of our best ever shows. Mm-hmm. Like, just It's just bang, 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 yeah. bang with jokes. Like, it's very, very good. Yeah. Cool, let's get to some questions. Excellent. I've uh, divvied up the questions into three different parts. We've got like the show, then wrestling, and then just everything else. So let's go for the show, which includes ourselves. We're, we're part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, as quite, a lot of people ask us about uh, sneakily just wanting to know about future episodes, what we'll, what we're likely to do, what we won't do, that kind of thing. Um, so I'll just throw out some errors and you know see if you bite. Uh, NWA, so like pre nineties. No, no. I'd be fine for doing one or you know maybe one or two as a filler between errors, but I don't know if I'd be able to do a lengthy. Uh, run of those I, I don't know much about it I don't know the wrestlers well, like isn't this fucking your boy rubbish garbage isn't he around yeah you got a Stark 3 kind of thing then Flair Dusty yeah. Steamboat du- actually fucking- <laughs> <laughs> it might be alright Aaron yeah. I do what want to do more shows that have Aaron Anderson in it what about um- Gotch and Hackenschmidt oh mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, of course uh, Hogan WCW it's going to happen oh yeah NWO era the hot streak it has to happen mm. as well at some point yeah, yeah. and the death of WCW kind of 99 April 99 to the death like yeah, we kind of yeah we did the arcade arc is, was a yeah. memorial <laughs> yeah but I wouldn't mind actually doing like the last couple of months I think that that would be phenomenal no, <laughs> uh, I I scan through. Got to get that greed in, Jay. I watched a bit of Greed. Holy shit! There's nobody left. Kwee Wee and Kwee Wee, yeah. And, uh, and f- my boy, you won't remember me. That guy, Chuck. Yeah, Sean O'Hare is there. Uh, Stasiak is there. The tree tree count, the boy yeah. band, and stuff like that. <sighs> Fuck, like. And yeah, you know we love Steiner and stuff, but I don't see a wrestle. Yeah. No, no. Steiner and he Booker. He was like carrying yeah. the company. Uh, him and Booker. It's like. Pff. Where is Jared at? No, he's the he's, he's there. He's, he's there. He's there. Uh, oh, it's Jared and Flair who wrestles in a Hawaiian shirt. Have an important question though. Where's Cronus during the end of WCW? Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably trying to scalp tickets I think <laughs> uh, yeah so it's Jarrett and Flair in a Hawaiian shirt versus um, the dust, Dustin and Dusty Rhodes trying to sell for like a 60 year old Dusty or something. oh my god hold on didn't didn't we watch like Dusty and Dustin tag at like Wrestlemania 6 and it, or something like that and it was fucking awful yeah it was like Rumble 91 uh, about that yeah, yeah. About that, yeah. just Bad badness. Who needs to see that? Ten years later, God. What um, do do? Yeah. <laughs> what about like world class or something? I don't know. I literally know nothing about it. Yeah, I'd be fine. I whatever. Um, anything you don't want to review? Like, I just if I say, well, how about this? Absolutely not. Like new stuff. Oh, current wrestling. Yeah. I really don't want to do anything raw ish 2003 on. God, this. fucking Bischoff. And bicycle shorts, yeah. Harry Jelly. Oh my god. But what about the invasion? I, I do want to do the that's invasion. That's 2001. So, I know, I know, yeah. but I do want to do the invasion. Yeah. That wasn't on the list. No, that's fine. Yeah, I'd be I'd be happy to do that hmm. at some point. Uh, anything else you don't want to do? Oh, indie. I Ring of Honor, Dragon Gate. Basically. Oh, I don't think we're qualified to really do any Japanese wrestling. Uh, we went to our phase of watching it a couple of years ago, gave up on it. I don't find the thought of a good match as a good enough reason to watch wrestling. You know, I need to have an actual reason to watch it. Like, like so, storyline characters. Yeah, like plots. Promos. Yeah. 
Oh, well, so we have some questions in, in here that I put in the wrong place. Nate Laoshi says, I'd like to know what the tattoo reviews are going to be once you get to them, but I get the impression those are being kept secret for the time being. Yep, you'd be right. <laughs> Carlo Esparza asks, why was OCC so quiet last podcast? I love his brooding voice. Uh, well, I suppose Orange County choppers are quite far away. So. <laughs> um, because... The week before, we were going to do it on the Wednesday, and then Steve said to Jay, we'll do it next Monday. Fine, because this is like Christmas week, we'll do it next Monday. And then he said, yeah, and then he never texted me. (laughs) And then he thought he texted me, then on the day he texted me and said, where are you? I was in work. And he said, come in. And I said, I can't, I'm too busy. And he said, eh, come on. (laughs) So I said, oh, fucking hell, okay, I'll come down. And then I was just kind of thinking about work. Because I had I had stuff to do the next day, which I had to go in early for. Mm. Well, thank dedication. you. Dedication. Hey, I like that. Dedication. I like that. Yeah. Uh, a couple of questions regarding Halloween Havoc. Keith Ayers Jr. asks, Do you think the Anvil ever reached the rank of Grand Wizard? <laughs> it answers our next question. Gareth Lewis, what is wrestling's most racist gimmick? Jesus Christ. I don't know. I still think um, Piper, Blackface is pretty fucking bad. <laughs> They're not the same show, Steve. No, but... In general. It's just in general. But his gimmick isn't that he's a racist. <laughs> he just is a racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a huge difference. Uh, that's true, that's yeah. true. You, you'd like, use hate of the Mexicals, didn't you? Oh, they were... They were pretty awful. The yeah. But stuff. I didn't hate them because it was racist. I hate them because they fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the gimmick sucks. Yeah, yeah the gimmick yeah. was awful. And yeah. No promos, no one getting over. Like, and... Hoovy can fuck right off. Like. Juventus. <laughs> Juventus. <laughs> um, oh, the Archfiend asks, when will you complete my life and review Heroes of Wrestling? I do. Yeah, I'd be fine with doing that as a one-off. Uh, <laughs> well, they were a date. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It is, uh, you know, as a, you know, like filler, as we're moving between eras, I think it'd be a grand show to try with. Uh, Liam Cook asks, who would you put in a monster truck match in 2015? <sighs> I don't know. Whoever they want, because I'm not going to watch it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. Oh, I reckon... Oh, the Ascension, I suppose. Because <laughs> they have the 80s Road Warrior Powers of Pain gimmick thing. Mm. So they'd have a cool monster truck, you know? You'd probably have to put Rusev in there. I think that would be a good gimmick. Some some kind of Russian thing that's in bits and all. It's like, <laughs> go, ladder, like, like the economy. <laughs> you go to Lada, put it into H. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Uh, Hugo Dominguez asks why is the water not hot instead of just cold <laughs> when Hogan puts his hand up uh, to the oh water yeah, he's like ah, and it's, it's not, not hot, hot. <laughs> why was he expecting it to be hot <laughs> <laughs> maybe because they paid so much money for everything else in that show he's like ah oh, yeah sure yeah it's probably boiled the water as well yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what to say about it. Is he allergic to cold water? (laughs) I don't think you can be allergic to different states of water. (laughs) Dan Slater asks, what question did you think we were most likely to ask? It's a very meta question. Who is your favourite wrestler? What do you think of WWE today? Yeah. What bar are you? Yeah, what what bar is... Something. Dot, dot, dot. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> Lots of people, including Jeremy Peoples and Ian Evans, are asking, what bar are we? Sorry, Steve! <laughs> what bar are we? Blue and grey. Oh. <sighs> so, Steve, you're wearing a blue and grey uh, <laughs> comfortable affair. <laughs> yes. I am... An ace bar? No. An ace hole, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure ace is blue and grey or silver or something. Hey, Steve, black pants? Uh, grey. <laughs> grey and... and brown and white shirt. Yeah. These are not bar no, colors no. at all. This is a... But, oh, like, my God. Jay's an easy one. He's wearing his licorice pink jumpsuit tonight. 
<laughs> as he usually does. So he's pink licorice. Yeah. Excellent. Our nougat bar. <laughs> nice. Justin Davis Steve asks, what bar am I? He's wearing pink and blue. Pink and blue. Right. He's a pink snack bar. Love it. St. Nick Dufresne asks, what's it going to take for V1 and OSC to finally sign up for Twitter? The Noggers demand it. If Twitter could be not shit. If ever there was a reason not to join Twitter, it's Rio Ferdinand. He's an English footballer, people don't know. He is a He's massive bell end. Just a fucking cunt. And he I I never liked him, but I didn't know he was a cunt until he joined Twitter. And then now people know he's a cunt. I'd rather hide my cuntiness instead of broadcasting it. Did you see the post he put up on like Christmas Eve saying to like, you know, fans to uh keep him in their thoughts because while mm. they're having their Christmas dinner, he's he's going to be training and jogging and some like soldier <laughs> wrote back guy i've been in afghanistan for three christmases in a row get over yourself yeah. mate <laughs> and he's just yeah. like oh god oh, shit. shut your fucking face like yeah. stop saying shit so the problem with twitter see, is he's, he's only training for good instead of his own art doesn't get paid for oh it. god so forget yeah. the hundred grand or whatever yeah. he's on these days yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, prob- so you're just saying you don't want to broadcast how much of a cunt you are that's kind of the bottom line yeah 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 like I know how much of my cunt I am. You know how much of a cunt I am. Let's keep it at that. I just think it's stupid. Uh, it does nothing that other sites don't do better. It's just that it happens to be more popular at the minute. Matt Hickman asks, "Did you ever get that tenor back from Virgil?" No, but uh, next time we will see him at some point, and we're going to bring fucking it up. coming after him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Didn't somebody else like post a story about he got? duped for like $20 or something I know Matthew Rude from KFIT Poker Night he was telling me about a story here. he got done out of $31 yeah, was, from the million dollar man million dollar man 31 yeah. what's with the one I just odd. like here's a tip like. here's a not well here's something that's $9 here's some $7 uh, okay oh right you know yeah, what yeah, mean? yeah 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 at Badger Sprite asks, does Greg have any... Greg is my brother. Does Greg have any more hilarious insulting nicknames for wrestlers from back in the day? Awesome. <laughs> who else has he got? So we've got uh, Ron Garvin, who is rubbish Ronnie Garbage. Got uh, Arn Anderson and... Um, Tully, and Tully Blanchard, who are fudge fingers and toadstool. <laughs> Sapphire is brown sugar. You might <laughs> Not <know>. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Big Boss Man is the Boss Boop. And uh, Bam Bam Begalo is Big Bum Begalo. What does Begalo mean? <laughs> That's just his name. Bigalo, isn't it? Bigalo. No, no, no. But All right. No, he's, a, he's just sad now. Awesome. <laughs> what a great gimmick. <laughs> and that's about it, I think. Yeah. Mark Pearson asks, how does Jay's brother feel? Another one for Greg. How does Jay's brother feel about his phrases like rubbish, runny garbage, getting over like they have? Uh, I actually did ask him that, and he replied, "Super awesome and just too sweet." <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that's the bottom line. Because <laughs> <laughs> the end, Jack Doss said so. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! One of our other friends, Nile, a different Nile. <laughs> that was the name of his wrestler, Dean Jack Doss. <laughs> The uh, light bulb. <laughs> if you don't come up with a name in 30 seconds, you're the whoopsie doodle. <laughs> I love being head of booking. That was great. <laughs> Alfie Russian asks, are we getting more amazing shirts? Aw. Uh, yeah, I'm sure at some point, yeah. He and Adam Flynn, I don't want to be cunty about it here. Uh, he and Adam Flynn ask also, are you guys ever going to do a live Q&A? Keep up the good work, boys, and can't wait for Gimmick Battle Royal segment in WrestleMania X7. Uh, Q&A, not really up to us. It's up to someone to have a venue and ask us. Yeah. That's about it, really. Yeah. 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 Uh, if you are in London in May this year, go see Ric Flair. You know why? Because guess who's introducing Ric Flair? OSW. Woo! 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 Nature boy! <laughs> You can't, you can't see this. Show. I'm okay. currently gigging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna drop an elbow. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. it's been confirmed. Yeah, yeah. Thirtieth. Awesome. Uh, yes, London. Uh, on the screen. Bam! Right there. Boom! Cannot wait. Yeah, go fucking have my passport. <laughs> yeah, come see us. Uh, got a point. Have a chat. Get pissed. Be awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to meet us for some reason. 
But yeah. hey, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, that'll be excellent. Yep. Buy me a pint. <laughs> <laughs> a tenner, possibly. <laughs> Joe Brown, uh, again? Has there ever been a time where you have almost quit the show? No. There, well, there was a time that I didn't do a few episodes, but that's because I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, I can't do it. Yeah, I uh, can't do it. And then I said, ah, no, fuck that. Like, you know, you have to put in a bit more effort. So that was like, I missed like, what, five episodes or something? It was in the early days mm. when mm. we had like tens of fans. Four, yeah. Mm. Four, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But yeah, then we had the three man here and the rest is history. And then boom. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, twice actually. Uh, one's WrestleMania 4 because it was such a horrible oh, show. And then I had to go edit it for another 30, 40 hours. And I was like, oh my, oh, fuck this. You know, the other one was WrestleMania 9. I, although it was a great show, it mm. just fucking kept going. It was, better, it was over 100 hours of editing and I just hated it. Mm. But it was out. Did you do anything different for that? Or? Sure, we re recorded a few bits for it and everything because uh, we. Spoilers. Um, but it just kept on adding bits and re editing and trying to get it to be perfect and stuff. And I just hated it when it was done. Oh my and then God. I brought it out and everyone loved it. So That's it actually like, a so great like, episode. Yeah. It's. Yeah. Definitely my top five. Oh, yeah. Without, without question, my top, top five favourite. Yep. Oh, Luke McGarry asks, what's your favourite episode to record? And was there any you didn't enjoy doing? I think the same ones that I liked recording were the same ones that I thought were the best. Or, you know, like Heat yeah. Wave 98, The Happening. You know, like No Way Out was, was a great one. No Way Out? No Holds Barred. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd have to say my favourite ones recorded are the WCW episodes. Yeah, Thunder. Just yeah. so new, so different. Never seen any of this shit before. Really loved it. Loved watching it and doing the show. Uh, this Tuesday in Texas was a lot of fun. Mm. Oh, but it was a half was. show as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, we, made, we made the best out of that. God. Yeah, the, the Zeus stuff was a lot of fun as well. From mm. the early days of the three-man era. Yeah, um... With pay-per-views, we have, whatever, eight matches, and it's, there's kind of a serious affair because I'm trying to get a lot of information across in a short amount of time. So if we're doing a half show or like a kind of more of a bonus show like The Happening or uh, Ready to Rumble or something, it's more fun because, you know, we only have a little to go to and have a bit more of a laugh, you know? Ready to Rumble was a good laugh as well. <laughs> oh, Brittany, bro. <laughs> That's a, oh, I just amazing. a little breaking out the lit on. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, any of you didn't enjoy it? Mainly four. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Uh, yeah, the kind of two man stuff, not as much fun as three man, mm, you know? Mm. Mainly four. One I stand 2006, not a big fan of. I enjoyed 2005. Obviously, episode two and three, where it's me in the toilet talking to myself. Mm. Mm. Um, December to his memory probably because I knew it was the last ECW show so I was trying to put as much into it because we won't touch it again for a long while and it's just that's a short show as well it's like what's that like four or five matches and most of them are just nothing matches but the episode itself is quite long Mm -hmm. it's 140 or something Mm. Jason Gumshoe McDermott asks which company have you enjoyed reviewing the most ECW WCW WWF WCW WCW yeah all of them are whopper shows. But at the same time, we only did a very small portion of it, so it was still fresh. Yeah. Like, you know, some of the WWF stuff in the late 80s, early 90s was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fun. Gary L. Thurtle asks, would you do this for a living if the opportunity was there? I mean, multimedia work rather than just wrestling. Uh, yeah, it'd be awesome. Man, if we did this for a living, that'd be fucking incredible. That's like be the dream, dream, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, kudos to you for not running advertising man no one asks us to advertise why don't you ask us <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been asked tempted no but yes please do <laughs> I'm ready to sell out folks <laughs> have you ever considered doing paid for commentary or f- a full pay per view film show um, that would be awesome if the opportunity was but like angry video game nerd movie no, 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 no. oh I've <laughs> have you watched it no what do you? What's going on? Oh, oh God. God! On Blu-ray. Yeah. I'm buying a DVD like a peasant. Standard definition. 
It looks so cheap, doesn't it? Oh, it's going to be shit. Yeah. Absolute bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> and he's already given away the fucking E.T. review on I his, can't, on his I can't believe he did that. Couldn't believe That's it. That's the payoff to your movie. And it's only like I'm sure that the well. hour and a half building up to that ten minute segment does yeah. dog rough. Yeah. Like. Dog rough. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Jones. Jay, I remember you saying... It gets easier to produce these shows the more you do, but how long do you realistically think you can continue to find the time? I truly hope, if you can, it's a run as long as Hercules pay-per-view appearances. It's a loaded question, mate, isn't it? Um, I can only think of a loaded answer, which is just enjoy the time you have with us. Oh. Yeah, it's not really a loaded question uh, answer. Yeah. I, would, I meant that to mean... In how it gets you to think. No, no, we're going to quit soon so just enjoy the time you have with us it's like something somebody's about to die kind of that's what that's saying. <laughs> remember the time we had together yeah, yeah. together um, Joseph Alan John Edlin asks three questions uh, one where did the phrase a state of your blank mate come from standard Irish Dublin phrase. yeah it's just well people here say when something looks like shit you go state of your whatever it is that yeah. looks shit or if uh, you see an unattractive lady you would say stadia yeah state yeah. of your face love yeah <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't though that well, you, yeah. you like, wouldn't say that to her it. face yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. yeah, that would make you a massive prick yeah yeah uh, favourite running gag probably what bar obviously what time is he <laughs> <laughs> uh Jesus. Do enjoy Fuck You Britain. Favourite mm. running gag. Mm. There's, a, there's a lot to choose from. And we add to it regularly. Mm. Whatever the winner of the Golden Nogger Award for <laughs> favourite running gag is. The, I'd say at its peak, the Doink Bra thing, I think we added to it every show. And to culminating WrestleMania 9. So. Yeah, the Doink Bra Bra. Yeah, I really like that. Garvin. For Garvin Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah, Garvin for Hall of Fame. Uh, and have you checked out Progress Wrestling? Uh, no, we're Irish, so so we don't. We don't live there. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, it's, uh, we don't. We don't go to English fucking house shows. Didn't actually have to read that question yeah. if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to edit that out there. <laughs> John McLennan asks, "What is V1 saying after OOC says, and we're not from Northern Ireland either?" In the start of episode twenty-four, it's like two years ago now. Is it? Must choppy. Exclusive pictures. Mr. Chippy exclusive pictures. Um, just go to our Glossary. FAQ. Yeah. Yeah, our FAQ on the site. Um, George Samano asks, what constitutes someone to be classified as my boy? Steve, his boys, some of his boys I wouldn't consider boys. Um, like Christian. Yeah, he's he was too, too popular. Yeah, he, he, he's, yeah, he's far too like, good. It has to be a generally unpopular wrestler that you always liked. And was never massively successful. There are some exceptions. Um, yeah, not no world titles. And there has to be a bit of a cringe factor in it. Like, <laughs> so, like Heidenreich, you know. Perfect boy. Yeah. <laughs> like, Thurman Sparky. Perfect boy. Uh, perfect examples of people who are not applicable to be boys. Million Dollar Man. Oh, yeah. Never a champion, but far too big a star. Roddy Piper, never a champion, far too big a star. Jake, Jake the Snake. Mm. Jake Roberts. Rick Rude. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Mm, any of them <laughs> no they've got to be lower mid card and below mm. they can flirt with the main event once or twice but if you get a like a good feud like a good three or four month feud with John Cena or Hulk Hogan or whoever Bret Hart nah you are out of the running for being a boy mm. Chavo Guerrero perfect boy yeah Donna Miller asks what is the Brucey and Brucey bonus S- spicy splice be better if you just see him. <laughs> yeah, Bruce Forthight from The Price is Right. Yeah. He gave out prizes. <laughs> Called Brucey bonuses. Yes. Yeah, if like if you're not from England or Ireland or as Britain or Ireland and aged well between thirty and sixty, you're not going yeah, to know he, who Bruce like, fucking strictly come dancing. He's doing that. <gasps> is he? Is he? Well, he's, I don't know if he's still doing it. I don't know, maybe like but he, last year is his last year. But he did do it up until recently. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so I didn't know he was yeah. still going. Everyone knows who he is. Holy shit. Yeah. He's a legend. Yeah. And one that I absolutely pray doesn't come out that he was fucking touching kids. Would have come shit. out by now. 
You think so? Oh my god, he I will kill so. OSW. His face is plastered all over the show. <laughs> Him and Wurzel. Well, Thank we've already taken a knock with Jim Davidson. Yeah. Mm. He got away with it, right? He, he, he okay, well, was only well, it's like Jerry Lawler and his. Ta- yeah, take curvy. that out. Allegedly. Yeah. Take that out. Allegedly. See, no, that's, ne- can't even do allegedly. Now it's now. safe. No, you can't do allegedly because he's been proven innocent, so you have to. Yeah, that's, that's, completely, yeah, yeah, uh, that's liable then. No, no, I know. It's, I don't think he was proven innocent. I just don't think there was grounds for a case. Still. M- much like Cosby. Uh, yeah. Cut that entire. Uh, Joe Brown <laughs> game this thread as well we've heard about the editing process how does the research and recording happen roles responsibilities how long is a recording session recording session is probably four hours four hours yeah. about that yeah plus or, well probably three and a half to four so how does the research how's that going Steve <laughs> <laughs> I mean watching the show is that research <laughs> hold on for, for this show well, I've got loads of notes, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the guys watch the show and I'll do my research and we record the show. That's, that's I do it, extensive right? uh, searching for bars. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Which is opening up your sweet press. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hmm. A now and later lime bar. <laughs> Who the fuck wants that? <laughs> At Agents of Valley asks about our recording setup. It's one mic on Jay's table. We sit around it. <laughs> I'm cushioned so we don't elbow the table. <laughs> nice. Although we can tell them about our original uh, recording setup, which was the microphone I got with Rock Band for the Xbox 360 in a Simpsons popcorn tub wrapped in a towel. Tea towel, yeah. Tea towel. Boom. Yeah. Quality. It, it was very ghetto, all right. Um, usually, I'd prop the microphone up with Jericho's book. Yeah, and <laughs> it used to be Bischoff's book. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I'm using styrofoam because it's less conductive at the moment. I recommend you too. Oh, what happened to Neo? <laughs> Never mind. He fucked right off. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, nary a warning. Mm-hmm. Well, it was more an editing. Like it was fun doing. Yeah, this. I'm yeah. sure. I. D- I more power to you, Jay. Uh, he and Dan and Miller, thank you, ask uh, if you ever quit watching wrestling altogether. I have. <laughs> <laughs> Except for our reviews. Um, I got to a point this year. I can tell you the exact moment when I gave up watching Raw. Dean Ambrose came out and started to beat up a mannequin and threatening to stick a screwdriver in its eye. And I says, fuck this show. Fuck wrestling. I'm done. I might see it in 2015. I haven't yet. Um, Chris Mayer asks, are there any recurring jokes or gimmicks that you may now secretly regret to a broadcast? Uh, anything in all of Eugene's proportions. The only, I, like, I regret cutting out some stuff, stuff mm-hmm. I meant to put in somewhere else. And Do you know what I'm glad you left in? Because it came very close to being cut out. was Dirty Lee. That was That's so true. close to being cut out. It's amazing. <laughs> Dirty Lee. <laughs> Thankfully, everyone took it quite well, but it was, it was a bit... There's literally zero malice in that. Like, yeah. Zero malice. There's zero malice in pretty much most things that we do. Yeah, it's very, very rare that we yeah. actually truly well, you'll know something. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing I really, well, I really regret. It was a great story, and I meant to put it somewhere else, but I just ended up not including it in the show. And it's like, now the show's released, there's, oh, there's no point in in saying it maybe I'll just ask you the same thing again in another show is that your recap of Lance Storm's steak and sizzle oh it's <laughs> amazing he's still doing <laughs> oh my god it's from Barely Legal what, <sighs> what's this about he was on uh, he did an interview once with uh, Brian Alvarez and he was talking about just wrestling in general and the difference between ROH and WWE and he was saying that in ROH you get a lot of steak but not much of the sizzle and in WWE it's not much steak but all sizzle and Jay's like does he not mean seasoning I'm like that's it it's it's done now (laughs) sizzle is good basic pro wrestling your meat and veg of wrestling surely that's steak sorry that's steak yeah then what sizzle is the Showmanship and uh, ballyhoo, uh, whatnot. 
<laughs> just banged on about it for 20 minutes. He said both words so many times that neither word had a meaning by <laughs> the end of the segment. And that, that was his pertinent point. It's not like... It's not groundbreaking, is it, really? Yeah. Like, you know the way when you think of a really good point and you might say it twice? It's like, it's like 34 times in, he's like, oh, the, all the sizzling. <laughs> <laughs> and, just, and, he, and he'd still bring it up every now and again. Uh, Joe Brown asks, where do you see the show being in a few years' time? And what else is in the pipeline? Well, sure, we're not going to reveal that. But we don't choose until right before we announce it. Um, so where do you see the show being in a few years time I don't know just being as awesome as ever we've covered like we all of those storylines that we said yeah we'll look at that we'll look at that that's going to take a few years yeah yeah absolutely at Dragon Rockwell asks what's to do with the whoa stuff at the second half of the Rumble 91 review what happened is uh, we record the review in two sections and the second WAV file didn't save, and it took about an hour trying to get it back, and it didn't. So uh, we just oh, had to come back the that. next week and record the second half of the podcast. Didn't you have it like it was in some some kind of limbo where it mm. wasn't in the the bin and it wasn't still on your comp, and you were trying to as oh my god oh uh, yeah it was in a temp file a temp but file. I can't copy the temp file until you close the program but when you close the program it'll delete the temp files oh. it's like yeah. fuck I mean, yeah and we had some good stuff I remember we were doing some Max Moon stuff on yeah, that first yeah. recording that I really would love to hear again yeah. Max Moon <laughs> uh, Eric Sylvester asks have you ever been recognised by the sound of your voice by other people once myself and Jay were in town we were walking around having a shop and some uh, lad uh, was like, sorry, are you J and V1 from OSW? I don't know if any other nations know this, but Irish people are quite shy about things like that. I, I didn't know what to say. I was like, yeah, cheers. Holy shit, this is fucking weird. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't know what to do, what to say. But yeah, it was awesome and kind of scary at the same time. It was very, very strange. And he kind of bolted out of there, Stephen. I was like... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was very cool. It was weird. It was really weird. I, uh, we were talking about wrestling, so... Yeah, I think I was giving out about John Cena. Yeah, I, I uh, we were buying the last ever Power Slam, wasn't mm, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. That's cool. Yeah, uh, it is very cool. Very strange. She's awesome. Yeah. Alex Williams asks, will you guys release more outtakes like you did with the Happening review? If we had anything big that we cut out, we would. Like, I suppose the talk about Cena was an outtake that we released separately mm. as well. But, that, the, but that was still kind of planned. Yeah, well, you sure. ambushed me. You said, Steve, why do you like John Cena? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the episode was long enough without it, so we just released it separately. And uh, Kevin Poole asks, why don't you guys set up a Patreon account? I'm sure some people will be willing to donate to help you for each video you release. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that. The problem with a Patreon account is that when you're producing videos, um, you need to give people like an incentive to give you a couple of bucks, and that and invariably means withholding your show yeah, it's for a few days. Conti to everybody else as opposed to here's something extra and awesome like Exactly. And like it would, wouldn't have a time to do a, a new show or something. So um I don't know. If you want to drop us a couple of bucks or buys a round and um, point dot com. Oh yeah. <laughs> at two girls one Marcus asks, how do you guys pan out storylines? Like do you guys look at an error and just vote on it or how does that go about? Well, I'd come up with an idea of how many uh, uh, a story arc, and I'd pitch it to the guys, and they'll either say, yeah, or they say, what? No more ECW. <laughs> <laughs> At Cavalier24601, must be a John Von John fan, uh, looking back at earlier episodes, what are the top missed opportunities? What jokes or comments would you want to add? More B puns, I think. Oh, yeah. No, I hated that. <laughs> oh, more B puns. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe we got away from puns. I'm so glad Should you did. Should be I, there was a bit, uh, Survivor Series 2014, I recorded it with Matthew. Um, I actually intended to do a segment about Big Show's heel and face turns, but uh, we just didn't have time to record oh, well, it. You have yeah. to do it. Uh, well, it's no good now, is it? Like, you know, but it's, I, I never recorded it, so. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. it'll turn against Yeah, yeah, but next yeah, time he turns, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, when it's what? 
34 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Evan Ligeras asks, who won the JBL impression? Jay Hunter. Did that's not. Who. You yeah. did not. Yeah. Bollocks. 50%, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I thought yours was best. Pretty sure. I, I thought yours was best. And I too. thought yours was most accurate. I would have gone <laughs> Steve, then me, then you. Like, I thought I, any I, funny, I, funny yeah. to put that. I, I would say me. I think yours was amazing. I love mine. The that's fruity it. booty. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you any women here. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking amazing, Steve. Connor Bostock McFall asks, funniest moment you've ever had on the podcast? Well, for me, two spring to mind easily. Uh, the, he is a nogger from yeah. this Tuesday in Texas. Yeah. Man, on the floor with that one. Had to stop recording for 10 minutes to try <laughs> get some oxygen and, <laughs> oh. and drink some water, you know? Well, we've had a couple. Uh, big black bully cock. And Andre Short from Halloween Havoc just died on both of them. Beautiful. Uh, I would say, I think Take a Boo. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, faggot. Faggot. Oh my god. Bundlistics. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But you, maybe you told Jay already before. That was the only thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say because I didn't just want to say it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've, I also. I think I ran Nogger by you as well. No, he didn't. You, Did I not? Because that was after uh, oh Faggot. And it, God. He just were like, because it was right after we were watching WrestleMania live in the pub. And he's like, oh, I have this amazing ring. I don't know if you're going to allow it on the show. And I was like, okay, just wait. Tell me, wait right. and tell me on the show. And then you broke it out. And it was, oh, jeez. Also, brown bread. I mm. thought that was mm. pretty funny as well. <laughs> Slightly cruel, mm. but okay. <laughs> cool. All right. We just got a couple more questions from this section well we'll do a couple yeah, more questions then we'll take a break yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Jeff Maxfield asks in a recent OSW review episode it was mentioned that Mr. OSC was not available to review due to his trip to America however in the most recent issue of the Wrestling Observer <laughs> it was noted that he could not review due to an arm injury he received after another real life encounter with Virgil which resulted in a quarrel breaking out over the ownership of a tenor <laughs> can you please elaborate on these wild allegations <laughs> All I can say is that Virgil left the scene visibly shaken. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Scott Evans. Hi, Jay. Thanks for such an amazing podcast. Oh, thank you. Three questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> Massive gun <content>. there. <laughs> After the cafe breaker of finding out Mania 9 had audio added while doing Ready to Rumble. Is there an episode which has rivaled editing time or backlogged other episodes? Uh, nothing's come close uh, to Mania 9 because of how, how much time it took. It's like ne- never that much again. Um, well, like we recorded those Metal Gear episodes months ago. Oh, months and months ago, and yeah. the fourth one hasn't come out yet. Yeah. We actually did some other games. Some other games podcasts, we so. use, yeah. Spoiler, they will come out at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Got a couple of Twitter questions for us. Uh, at Born Depressed asked, how are you? Right now or in general? Uh, you can take it any way you want, Steve. Mm. <laughs> Koi. Steve, how are you? Grand. <laughs> <laughs> and I shall take sheepish. Sheep? Mm. Mm. Um, at Murica Mark, awesome name. If you could change anything about the podcast, what would it be? If we could hire some Indian to record to edit the show, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Why an Indian? He works for sheep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And if he gets upset, he'll just have a cry wank in the corner. <laughs> Is that what they do? Yeah, the you crank, saw a guy yeah. doing that, didn't you? <laughs> we didn't watch a guy doing that. We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but there seems to be, you know, it's obviously, you know, population is generally 50 50, but there are no women about mm, it. Well, mm, what's happening here? Mm. Probably all getting, never mind. Oh, no, next, no. Tw- next Twitter no. question. Getting the bus. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> At Paul Heyman Guy 12, when will you record an album of you imitating theme songs? Also, how much will it cost? I'll be marking out if it got released. Because we only do, like, bits of it. Yeah, like, ten seconds. Yeah, I couldn't do a full song. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Isn't that for four minutes? Mini, mini, me, mini, mini. That's Benoit. Benoit. <laughs> I always do Benoit. You're trying to do Tank Abbott there. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose if we splicey, splicey enough songs, we could get to, like, 74 minutes or something, right? Jesus. Maybe. 
maybe, maybe, maybe we could pick an era and just do every wrestler from this era. Here's 25 seconds of a song. Everyone who was on the roster between 84 and 89. Then everyone between 90 and 95. Then the Attitude Era. Then the shit era. <laughs> <laughs> it probably wouldn't be spontaneous then. and less fun. Mm. You know? But if we released it as we're not telling you what the tracks are and you have to guess uh, or something, that would be great. Here, let's do that now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> we will find out when we listen back. <laughs> sure, that was actually really well done. Yeah. Was, uh, that was like a professional. That's the most professional we ever done. Yeah. <laughs> See that? Layers and all. At the Bobby Cash asks, do the Steves do any research before watching a show or do they avoid all spoilers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? We watch the show. What? <laughs> oh, before watching the show. Well, like, we'd know most of what was going to happen. You know, the big stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't do any research before I watch a show. I watch a show, I take my notes, and if there's anything that I need to check up afterwards, I'll check it up. He asks... If I play my intro to them yet, I'll show you in a sec. Hello and welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast. Filmed in glorious grapple vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines pay-per-view by pay-per-view. It's your boy, Jay Hunter. Join as ever by Mr. Rosey. Alright. <laughs> and V1, what's the story? <laughs> Tonight, it's WrestleMania Part 8, and it's coming up right now. That was actually, not yeah, that was... That was an excellent Irish impression. <laughs> yeah. well. is, is, he's not he's, Irish. Is he not Irish? English. Fuck off. Ah, oh, no, that's... Nobody can do that good an Irish impression. Okay, because no. he... Holy shit. Okay, if the fact that he's English, that's... Okay, that, that goes from being well done, mate, mm. to... Holy shit, that was amazing. What's his real voice? Because... No... No way. All right. <laughs> I'm the bloody juggernaut, eh? <laughs> you little fucking wanker. It's been emotional. <laughs> Enrique M. Messers asks, uh, JV1 and OSC, your video podcast seems to have the momentum of a runaway freight train. <laughs> Why are you guys so popular? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. What was Mr. Burns' answer? I think he says it's like a two-part answer. So uh, it's not a funny response. It's not a funny know, response. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Christopher Ignacio Armesto Santos asks, what do you think of the pedestrianization of North City Centre? <laughs> I'm dead against it. People forget they need access to Dixon's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Austin Beatty asks, will Jay ever take a boo? <laughs> Well, only in the shower. <laughs> and, oh, and last question here. At the Eli Steele asks, why is Mr. O.C. so cool? Um, I just look cool compared to you two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sean's just won the 96 Royal Rumble. So, ah, that's the end of part one of our podcast. Cool. So we will see you next time for some wrestle talk. Wrestling. <laughs> Shawn Michaels going to WrestleMania to face the WWF champion, whomever that may be. And now, the 1997 Royal Rumble. Part two of the OSWQ and A. Let's talk some wrestling. Lots of people, including Sean Carlton, Emmanuel Smith, Lassie Corp Nielsen, are asking what do we think of the following promotions? Uh, New Japan? Uh, it's the best wrestling in the world, but I still don't watch it because it doesn't build up the matches. Have you seen any Lucha Underground? Uh, nope. 
Me neither. It, 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 I've heard it's good, but I just haven't had time to watch it. Uh, Chikara. Nope. And he also asks about our thoughts on the state of NXT call-ups. I suppose anyone who isn't part of the Shield got the shaft. I feel bad for I, Bo Dallas. I still stand by what I said months ago, that NXT is the most overrated thing on TV. It's a below-average wrestling show that people tend to mark out for. I, I'm sorry, I think they're insane. Do you watch NXT, Steve? I've, I stopped, but I did watch it for a long time. and I Like every like, week? Yeah, uh, I'd say up until September, maybe. And I was just done. I was like, every week, fucking Enzo Amore and the big tall kind of piss. <laughs> <laughs> kind of piss. Can't think of his name. Kind of piss. What's his name? <laughs> That's uh, it, man. Edge mixed with your man who with the... McIntyre. Tramp stamp from TNA. Oh, Lance Hoyt. Yeah, he's uh, two of them. And when Leo <laughs> Kruger was in it and fucking Bailey and oh my god I'm sorry uh, I understand now you've got Kenta and Kevin Owens and uh, Prince Balor and whose entrance was amazing uh, Finn Balor but I just it's a nothing show uh, so kind of piss <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, Chris Dante asks about current TNA well they're it's out over. of business yeah. at the moment. <laughs> they're getting their TV deal later in the month Oh, they're, they're back this month. Yeah, Destination America. <laughs> 30% of viewers. <laughs> you didn't oh. have that many to begin with. <laughs> I think we can outdraw TNA at this one. <laughs> Holy shit, man. It's really sad because there was a good couple of years there where we were the biggest TNA fans, man. Yeah. Good times. Good times. And then we got out of that and got into ROH a bit and then they all left ROH fucking Nigel... Fucking Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson left. Ah, oh, they all just went, and we were left at Roderick Strong. <laughs> a poor guy gets an awful lot of guff off me. Someone asked a question here. How come you hate Roderick Strong? So I don't. Much? I don't. I, I have nothing against him. It's just he is what indie wrestling turned into, and I don't like his type of wrestling. He has literally zero promo ability, and it's the most important thing about drawing money. I'm making you care. So I don't care about him. He's an excellent wrestler. That's fine. That's great. But there are loads of excellent wrestlers out there. Anthony Russell and Ricky McPothead and Adam Lennon ask, how about the Irish wrestlers? Uh, Shamo? Yeah, I, I like Shamo. Uh, Character is awful. I don't see him as a very top good guy. Like, I really don't. Very decent big man, I'd say. Yeah. He's no Cesaro, but you know, who is? Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Becky Lynch what do you think of Becky? Uh, I absolutely want her to do great um, doing a bit better now that she's a heel but it's weird hearing Becky do for almost you know, big dull backs <laughs> yeah. like, even more carny than Shamo <laughs> like, you know. uh, Prince David Finn Balor here yeah he's awesome he's fucking great he's he really phenomenal is. Like, I, I kind of think that maybe we're Irish, we're kind of biased towards them. But I still... It's fucking great. I still don't think you can make up your mind about promos, yeah? I uh, haven't heard him. So, I don't know if he's got what it takes to be a top guy, but I think he's got everything else. I could listen to him doing a promo, but it just... It'd be like us doing a promo, it's just weird. Uh, Sean Goodliffe asks, What are your thoughts on The Ascension? They're terrible wrestlers, love the 80s gimmick. Stephen Cookson asks, have you have any of you ever had a time where you gave up on wrestling? Or was <laughs> WWE? Steve now. If so, what made you give up and what made you brought back? Well watch Raw and you'll see why you gave up. <laughs> what brought you back? Nothing yet. <laughs> Nothing yet. Punk would bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> He's so far away from going. Back. I know. Um well, God, then. what would bring me back? I will watch the Rumble. I love the Rumble. It's my favourite show every year. But I don't know if I'll watch Mania. Hmm. Steve, it's more of a time thing with you, isn't it? Like 2005 to 2006, I just didn't watch anything. I start watching again just because, I don't know, one day it was on, I just fucking started watching it. Bit of experience, yeah? Bit of ex- no, no, I used to download the show back then. It's Raw and fucking Smackdown and Impact. 
It was like, where did I get the time? I, when you think back yeah. on it, it's like, holy shit, I used to fit like 10 yeah. hours of wrestling I, in a I week. I wouldn't wind through it. I'd yeah. watch the fucking show. And like nowadays, it's just experience. Although they're showing now two hour highlights of Raw rather than experience. So it's worse. You know, I just want like 20 minutes a week. This is like, oh, fuck, I'd have to watch like an hour and a half. No. Mm. If Raw went back to two hours, I'd probably watch it. Cameron Slater asks, what would make you stop watching WWE altogether? Well, put on the show you've been putting on, really. Uh, repeated DQ finishes. Delay, well, I said on one of the shows, the Raw shows are DQs and just run out the clock until the pay-per-view, and the pay-per-view finishes stall the finish, the payoff for the next month. Yeah. So, so it's fucking nothing. Round and round and start. We still haven't got... Dean and Rollins. They've been feuding since June. It's 2015. <laughs> Fuck off. Oh, yeah. bar, bar my shit. Bar, why are everyone buying my shit? Didn't I throw... I shovel shit. Why don't you eat it? Eat my shit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're booking this year. Uh, Bray Wyatt was a big turn off for me towards the end of the year. Uh, his meandering going nowhere yeah, promos nothing you can do with him now um, they've hurt him really badly but wh- how do you stop that it, like say let him he seems like he's a talented guy let him go out he is see, see like let him craft a promo do what he wants to do see where he goes it's, it couldn't be any worse than the shit he's doing at no, the moment absolutely not his his you know tone and his cadence and all are fucking amazing yeah. but the content of his promos is just nothing. It's fucking waffle. That's all it is. It's too much. Jason the Gumshoe McDermott asks, who do you feel is the biggest bully in wrestling history? <laughs> Triple H. Like, oh, right. I was yeah, thinking Hogan of, doesn't come close. I was thinking of uh, a blacktop bully. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Vince. He's like the ultimate bully. You, you, you literally have to do what he tells you or else you've nowhere to go. Uh, also, who is the biggest black bully cock out of the hosts? <laughs> <laughs> of course, it has to be me, like, doesn't it? Uh, you de- oh well, no, no question. Like you're, yeah. you're a table Task bully. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taskmaster Junior over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steve, you're a bully as well. Yeah, big bully. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alex Medlin asks, why does OCC love Lex Luger so much? Um. I guess they might live in the same part of California, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but like bikes. Obviously, Lex is great. Obviously, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's like he's my main event boy. There we go. Jan Glisman, what's it with Jay's fixation on the blacktop bully angle, King of the Road with yeah. Dustin Rhodes and Barry I don't Darcy? know. I wish I knew. It was the greatest match that was the worst. It was expensive. <laughs> A lot more manpower, multiple cameras, multiple vehicles, and... Probably even multiple takes. And it caused Dustin to get fired because he played it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, um, it's like, what's wrong with WCW? King of the Road <laughs> is what's wrong. Is that 95 or 6, sorry? I think 95. 95, ah. Matt's an expensive year. Ooh. 95. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin Poole asks, what movie do you want to see remade starring only wrestlers? Oh, Predator. Oh, what a great answer. <laughs> Over the top. Just all those 80s classics. Matt? I I could even cope with the Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. Man, some A plus stuff here, yeah. Steve. Yeah. Guess what decade I was born <laughs> in. <laughs> Kenji Yoshida, if any chosen wrestler could make a surprise return, who would it be and when? Benoit Rumble. Oh, it would be a surprise, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, imagine if like a song came on and it was a son. Does it, he have another he, son? He yeah. has like a son who's like in his Standard 20s wrestling. who Fuck wants off. to be a wrestler. Yeah. Fuck yeah. off. I need <laughs> some counselling made if you want to get into this business. Punk coming back would be amazing. Oh, the Yeti. Imagine he was number 13. <laughs> get your watch. Shivani, what are you doing here? The <laughs> Yeti. <laughs> That's a shame. What about you, Steve? They're, nobody, nobody's... Like, Brock was the big one. And yeah. They've, they've, well, he's fucked it up because he doesn't want to do anything. I don't think it was his fault. They, they fucking neutered him coming straight out. Like, he lost to John Cena in his first match. I think you mean 
not showing up for four months, mm. <laughs> having mm. the belt. Like, yeah. yes. well, just pay him, and but he'll that's show up. not yeah. his fault. That's they signed him to uh, a low number of dates, and they burned through them for stupid things on Raw. Yeah. Mm. It's uh, it's the exact same thing that happened with TNA and Flair and with Rob Van Dam. They had them both to uh, limited dates and they blasted through them and then like RVD, well, you know, I think he was the champion and they were like, so are you going to wrestle on the Bound for Glory? And he's like, no, my dates are up. <laughs> and so they like, I'm pretty sure that they had to pay him to drop the belt. Ridiculous. You could, you could have avoided this with pen and a piece of paper, mm. you know? Dozens of people in an office. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Harley Wooden asks, if you could choo choo choose a direction for WWE to go in the Attitude Era, Ruthless Era, PG Era, which era would it become? PG Era is fine. It's just the writing that shit. Yeah. And build some new stars, you know? The 80s were, were PG. Yes. And they were it's the second biggest time in history. Mm. It's, that's not the problem. Keith Wilcher asks, what did you guys think of the who killed Mr. McMahon limo angle? It was shit, but I enjoyed Paul London going <laughs> that backstage. Was great. That was uh, awesome. Don't appreciate that they did this angle like the day after Sherry died and they refused <sighs> to drop it and they wouldn't even put up a picture of her, you know, uh, because they didn't want to taint the angle. Yeah, there was three deaths. There was a, a less Benoit famous, a couple of then days. Sherry, and then when Benoit happened, Wright killed the angle. Yeah. It's fucking terrible. I, I assume they didn't have an idea for the ending of that. It's probably going to be Mr. Kennedy again. Yeah, you know? Hornswoggle. Yeah, <sighs> Hornswoggle. Well, either way, you you know that Vince wasn't going to be dead, and he yeah, was going to be yeah, brought, yeah, brought back. Yeah, like A week later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Terry Stone asks, which current wrestler would benefit most from a manager? A vocal, physical manager, not just a Lana-type side piece. Uh, I think Captain Jack Swagger. He he needs Zeb Calder. Like he's terrible on the mic. I think he's an awesome wrestler. But I think Roman Reigns could do it as mm. manager as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyone else that's really finding it tough? Like it just uh, Cesaro. They they gave him Heyman, but did absolutely nothing with it. They tried to push him as a face, but Heyman was a heel because he was. Oh, what were you thinking, boys? Andre Temple Young says, "Should Steiner math be taught in school?" I say yes. Couldn't agree more. I don't think it should be taught until college. I don't think young minds can comprehend it. <laughs> Too many fractions. Yeah. <laughs> El Mojo Karayuti asks, what do they call Irish smarts? Smarts. <laughs> <laughs> you racist. <laughs> Peter Michael Walker uh, says, Gary Stridham, wow. Wow. <laughs> Uh, if you could be in the crowd for one pay-per-view, what would it be and why? Of all time? Yeah. Bash of the Beach, 96. <sighs> mm. You'd be that lad that runs into yeah, the ring and gets, gets his head. <laughs> 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 Probably either WrestleMania 6, Hogan Warrior, or X8 with Hogan Rock. My you know, two biggest matches. So mm. That's a great one. Um, I'd probably have to go with B- Bash of the Beach. So iconic. Mm. Jim Baldessari asks, after watching the ECW saga, whose booking style do you prefer, Vince or Heyman's? Well, of course we'd say Heyman's from what we saw, but we, I haven't seen enough ECW to comment. Fair enough? Yep. And Vince makes stars. I know ECW had stars, but they're on a small level, unproven on a bigger level. It's only when Vince has his way with them that they become stars. Um, I, well, I, I'd say Vince anyway. But Heyman had the SmackDown 6 era, so that that's true. counts in his favour as well. That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kimberly Smith, if a genie gave each of you one wrestling-related wish, what would it be? Well, can wrestling be great? I'd love it to be awesome. My one wish would be two hours a week. That's ah. your one wish? Yeah. Two You're wasting it on that. I think that would fix a lot of the problems. It will fix a lot of it. Like, Jay's wish sorts everything out. What if it was just an amazing three-hour show each week? No, I I prefer a shit two hour show. <laughs> <laughs> we cut the last hour of Raw, so there's no men left. <laughs> Smackdown gone, Raw and NXT. If you want to watch that, yeah, great. Yeah, no, I I I agree with what you're saying. It's just you're you're aiming so low, you know, like us three, top of WWE, book the book the company. Oh, wow. 
There you go. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's definitely that's number one wish. And we can do it from and, wherever we want. We and don't. there are no writers there. It's just yeah. us three bookers. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is what you're doing this week. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Triple H. Cut your own promo. Got very heavy bags. <laughs> <laughs> what a job. I got one. <laughs> Oh, uh, at AEW Review asks, what are your thoughts on the Styles Clash and should it be retired? Um, Styles, well... No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Has he injured anyone recently? Yes, he has broken four necks recently. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, this year, yeah, yeah, well, 2014. Roderick Strong, Lionheart, Yoshi, Tatsu, Satoshi, Kojima. Um, listen, it's a shit-looking move. Yep. People don't... Regardless, it's their fault for not being able to take the move, but the end result is a broken neck, so fucking drop the move. I was saying, like, I don't think the move should be banned, but I don't think he should do it. There is a safe way to do it. Kurt Angle did it. McMinger did it safe. That's right, yeah. Uh, you just need to swing more up, so even if he tucks his head in, he's not smashing He's his going neck. to come down at the worst on top of his head, exactly. I suppose. Yeah. Well, if he, if he yeah. actually... He's just not strong enough to yeah. do it. Do it at the start of the match, then. I got... I, the, 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 don't do it at all. It isn't AJ botching it, you know? Like, the problem no. isn't AJ. The problem is people are... Trained. Trained to uh, take a bump and tuck their yeah. head. Yeah, I, got, I wouldn't ban it, but I'd ask him to not use it. Yeah, and I'm sure you, I'm sure if you asked him nicely, it's would say... Yeah. No, he actually came out and said no. Oh, oh shit. He actually brought out a t-shirt saying, oh, break necks. Oh, AJ, why? Bit of a oh, cunt. That one, that's, that's playing the kayfabe part mm. of it. I don't mind that, like... But uh, if he, what, it's a, it's a, it's a really, really tough one. Like, how about I'll meet you halfway where he integrates into storylines and shouts, "Tilt your head back" before he does the move. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Like it is their fault for having broken axe, but uh, giving it to a guy with a broken axe, you know. <laughs> what are <you> <laughs> At Shane Fallen asks, "What wrestlers have you changed your mind on since reviewing them over the last year?" The thing that sticks out to me is that I loved Kurt Angle wrestling machine in ECW 2006 and then seeing his MMA style offense it's fucking woeful I thought yeah. it was amazing at the time but I was like oh state of it yeah well you know having, having watched MMA for a while it's like hmm. William Son Bellman asks what was the worst idea in WWE or WCW ever um, botching the invasion Probably the worst ideas they have ever had. Putting the belt on Diesel, taking away from Brett. Uh, Diesel's the lowest drawing champion in WWF history. Putting a wig on Goldberg. A booking of Goldberg, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah having him lose to Kevin Nash. Um, the brand split. Although I'm kind of, I kind of like it a bit, you know, now because with the three hour Raw and the two hour SmackDown and no brand split, it's like yeah, there's literally zero reason to actually watch it now. But at the time, disaster. Do you remember when they had the fucking raw pay-per-views and you oh, fucking hardcore Bradshaw against <laughs> <laughs> the dancing Bubba Ray for the title and all? Oh, my God. Woeful. Um, buying WCW as well. Uh, also, Vince not buying UFC in 2000 for Shane. Uh, holy shit, they're a billion-dollar company. Gotta teach a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Josh Suggett asks, First off, I have to say I love the Halloween Havoc episode. Thank you. It's hard to say this, but it's probably in my top three favourite episodes. Hmm. My question, do any of you enjoy wrestling pre-WrestleMania 1? And no, I don't mean Gotch and Hackenschmidt. (laughs) (laughs) I think I might be more inclined to watch like early 80s and 70s NWA stuff because I think they might have a better wrestling show. But yeah, Backland and shit like that and even before that no oh, duck arse like no thank you no thank you fucking cheeky baby as champion and all <laughs> Art Van de Ley <laughs> part of the human fund uh, as greatest mullet in wrestling Crush oh, Crush bro Ed Leslie yeah. wonderful Kentucky Waterfall uh, the two I always think of are Sean and Taker a oh, big Taker. red mullet. <laughs> ah, well, like <laughs> that's a fish, isn't it? <laughs> oh no! What's his face? Ricky Morton <laughs> with the. Oh, yeah. uh, I I know that that's the rooster, but he had he like a... pointy blonde mullet, <laughs> and he was like ancient. <laughs> hmm. 
Yeah, the spike gelled hair animal. Yeah, yeah. That is oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Hezekiah Karlova asks, if I paid for your seat, would you fly to Dallas for WrestleMania 32? Purely hypothetical, or is it? Don't spend that kind of money on us, mate. No. I'll take your money. <laughs> <laughs> but you won't talk to him. <laughs> Teach him a lesson, not the... <laughs> no frivolous spending. <laughs> Teach you a lesson. To... <laughs> Uh, at the bar Prince asks if you could choose to bring back resurrect one WWE wrestler alive or dead who would it be Eddie I reckon he was he kind of kept Benoit going so he wouldn't have killed himself and his family Eddie's a good one in fact he's probably the best one yeah yeah Dan Slayer says I loved the 123 kid and as such always had a soft spot for X-Pac my friends think he's shite who is right? And please answer. We've got a Virgil bet ten pounds riding on it. I love the one, two, three kid, and detest Xbox. So that means it's kind of fifty fifty then, isn't it? Do you think yeah. he's a good worker? Yeah. No, I like people thought he was a decent worker. No, no, he wasn't. I didn't care for one, two, three kid, and I detest Xbox. So your mates are right. I think Xbox is capable of having a good match, but his character, like he hasn't changed in since what 18 years he's still doing the same shit the same moves the spinning kick the bronco busters still has the beard the bandana so no no he fucking sucks and he's a just like a lanky can of piss like is <laughs> <laughs> he's a short lanky can of piss <laughs> can of piss, can of piss. <laughs> ricky goss why do people hate tna well watch the show well uh, it's more they've made They've squandered talent repeatedly, just over and over again, and the company feels like it's about to die, which it kind of is. Um, and people want so a legitimate depressing. bit of competition for WWE. Yeah, everyone wants competition for WWE. Uh, I can't speak for anyone else, but I hate watching things that make me feel sad, and watching TNA made me feel sad, so I quit. And they do good things, and then they shit on it like Austin Aries got really hot they gave him the belt and then they shit on it he dropped the belt almost instantly because oh, he became a, a tag team uh, comedy jobber and then back to the mid card and Eric Young like they actually did a decent job booking Eric Young as champion but he's fucking Santino he can't be champion exactly. he's ruined him for the prior 10 years yeah and um, Chris Sabin is always an excellent wrestler but he's a tag team guy and that's it. So he's a mid carder. He's a bit scruffy. You as well. gave him the belts, and then you dropped him back to the mid card, and now he's feuding with Velvet, and then he left the company. So fucking well done, Tina. Yeah. Bobby Lashley, he was great. He's actually doing his best work as heel champion, and so he just lost the belt to Rude and then won it back. It's just fuck off, would you? Uh, it's squandering Anderson. all the t- everything. Um, Is there anything they they don't fuck up in the end? And also like stuff like all of their. Uh, faction angles the main event mafia aces the and eights you're always by the end of it it's a great start meandering middle and you can't wait for it to die for it to die and no one gets over it they always bury the baby faces they always bury TNA like the factions always win out it goes back to the NWO like WCW never got their fucking day uh, in all fairness shame on us for expecting more there you go. Like, Dixie Carter, she's just not that smart. It's like asking a child to draw a masterpiece. You're just not capable of it. We shouldn't expect it. However, we should keep giving the child money and more expensive art equipment to try and, and waste it off. Can the kid hire Vince Russo as a consultant <laughs> and get them booted off Spike? Didn't she recently say that uh, you can't rule out Venture Soap coming back in the future? <laughs> Shoot in the face. It's just ridiculous. Charles Dickerson, Nathan, Nathan Wood asks, what's your biggest for fuck's sake moment in wrestling? When Cena beat Brock Lesnar when he just came back. That was a huge for fuck's sake. Definitely the biggest one in recent memory. Killed yeah. like hundreds of thousands of pay-per-view buys throughout the year with that. Yeah. Triple H WrestleMania 19. Oh my god. Oh, Booker T. Mm. 23 seconds. Mm. It took three F5s to beat Angle, three rock bottoms to beat Austin, and one pedigree to beat Booker T. <laughs> Remember when um, K Fed beat John Cena 
I was pretty angry that even though I hate John Cena, I was furious that they let a outside dancer uh, <laughs> pin your champion. <laughs> Ridiculous. Aaron Andrzejak asks, "Who was the greatest wrestler to wrestle barefoot?" Um, obviously, it's Velvet McIntyre. <laughs> yeah, Monk Savage. She can't do a drop kick. <laughs> Um, um, probably Umaga. I mean. oh, finger bang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, have you guys gotten any love from wrestlers about your show? Um, oh, it seems a bit. What's the word? Humble brag or something. We have some wrestlers following us, but you know, do you know what I mean? I don't know. A lot of ECW guys and Headbanger Mosh as well. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Headbanger Mosh if you're listening Fugu <laughs> <laughs> Year 7 of Dwight Peter Angle <laughs> Still not over oh. Andy Nielsen asks Have you seen One Night in China? Is mm. that the one with X-Pac? Oh it is I yes, think so it is. I, watched, I have Yeah it was gross I watched about a minute of it I, um, I couldn't Listen to him. Yeah, yeah, he's like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, baby. Baby. oh, oh, yeah, baby. I was, no, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go away even if I've ever seen it. Xbox, uh, yeah. But also tried to watch Queen in the Ring, and that was just as gross. She's just old and nasty, and uh, it makes me feel sad. Like, I want to cup of tea and a hug again like. yeah it's quite depressing it's like hey Vince you wanna fuck with me I'll get you back for this it's like wow you the thought your brain is don't hold still back there, there Joni yeah. it's really sad yeah because it's it's a mirror of what you actually think actually yourself. have you ever seen the uh, documentary I think it's 101 reasons not to not be a pro wrestler this is where all of the promos are them in parking lots it's her in a parking lot I, she's, I don't know if she's drunk or if she's out of her face on drugs, but she just <laughs> throws a strop about Triple H and Stephanie and shit. Oh, it's horrible. It's so sad. Well, they were... In- well, yeah, it is very sad. They were engaged and they actually lived together and Triple H went out and is like banging Stephanie on the side. It's f- bad form, like, you know. But, you know, that wouldn't spiral you into porn life. No, Do you know what I mean? absolutely not. You clearly have issues if... That's the, you know, that's your jumping off point for going completely off the fucking wagon. Michael Grzewalski asks, Hey guys, first off, I love your show. Thank you. I discovered it when Matt from Two Best Friends play Shared Your Heatwave 98 video and I've been watching ever since. Yeah, they're awesome. That's so awesome. What wrestling segments have you ever seen with or without a non-wrestling fan that made you become instantly ashamed or embarrassed by? Where do you start? HLA. God. I was watching Raw back in, oh, it was like 94, I think. And uh, I just happened to watch him. My, my dad came in and he thought he'd watch a bit as well. Jeff Jarrett comes out, the country singer mm. Jeff Jarrett, on a horse. And he was like, y- you fan of this? <laughs> <laughs> I was so, like, I'm not, this fucking sucks. But I, I, I love wrestling, you know, so it's very difficult. Oh, my God. Uh, Al Wilson and... Don yeah. something Marie, yeah. getting married and him having a heart attack and shit that was pretty rough not emotionally I mean quality wise <laughs> like I mentioned earlier the segment that made me finally give up wrestling for the time being mm. the uh, Dean Ambrose with the screw screwdriver and the doll uh, at Nate underscore Tease uh, what was your first live event oh uh I went to Smackdown House Show House Show? House Show <laughs> up in Belfast the spot is in 2000 I think uh, it was awesome Brock Lesnar was there uh, he was in the main event I got to see Angle and Benoit team up against Guerreros that was pretty Smackdown fucking phenomenal 2003 maybe? 2002? I think it might have been 2001 yeah Smackdown 6 era yeah. yeah it was just oh it was awesome The Point 94 Main event, Crush against Randy Savage. Sub-main event, Sean against Razor. Just before WrestleMania 10. Not bad, not bad. And was Virgil on the show? Virgil, sorry, Virgil wrestled Diesel first match. Wow. And I was like, oh my God, this couldn't get any better. (laughs) (laughs) It did. The worst drawing champion in history. (laughs) This is before you. He's actually cool at at this stage. 
yeah. Big Daddy as well. Mm-hmm. I got to see the Fed back in the 90s yeah. when they came once ever yeah. to, yeah. to wow. Ireland. You were very lucky. That was amazing. awesome. Uh, my first one was Insurrection 2003. It was a Raw show with Austin and Bischoff. Test, my boy, Steiner, and the god-awful Raw crew that was on at the time. So yeah, it was great. Man, got pissed. It was in Newcastle as well. Uh, great show. Well, no, it was a bad show. I had a great time. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Which is mostly how how shows are. You know, yeah. You can make it have a great night when it, but the show is always shit. Like, Cali there doing the you can't see me. You know, that. In his nineteen minute main event, fuck me, was it uh, Flair and Carlito uh, who phoned it in, but still had the match of the night. Bad. Okay, uh, Steve Yurko says uh, the WWE Network approaches you with a simple request: thirty five shows to fill new holes in their programming uh, lineup. That's a pretty daunting task. I'm sure you guys aren't up to it. Instead, come up with three wrestler spin-offs transplanting already popular characters into new locales and situations. Hmm. Didn't they do that? It wasn't like Santino working in a pizzeria. Oh, no, well, that, that was, was Slam City. Show, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do hey. like the idea of Hulk and Hulk's rock and wrestling cartoon, like having a WWE animated cartoon show. Hmm. So just three like live action shows or... Yeah, whatever you want. Well, yeah. Obviously, you'd have to have big shows in New Year's Baby. <laughs> that, that has legs. <laughs> <laughs> Two. <laughs> uh, Someone with Shiki. Shiki Baby. Shiki had like a drive through window and the speaker doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and he has to give an order. He has to get the right order. I don't know. Something, something Shiki. He's great. Or math with Scott Steiner. Steiner will get his own show. Scott Curler asked about any uh, dream matches. Because he, he heard us talk about Aaron Anderson and Bret Hart. Oh, it'd be so good. Oh my God. Obviously, Hogan and Flair in 92. Oh, they didn't draw on the house At show. Nine, the yeah. two fucking biggest stars in wrestling. I'm sure they'll do fine. Like mm. Maybe don't book them to be shit. Like. <laughs> but I think Hogan might come. Austin Goldberg. Never yeah. happened. Mm. Rock Sean. What were they thinking? Buy out his fucking contract. Have that match at WrestleMania 20. It makes back the money you paid for the contract multiple times over in one night. And then you've got the rest of his contract to make more money. Jesus Christ. Pay out Sting's contract with Time Warner. Get him in. And then guess what? You don't have to put Kurt and fucking Austin in the invasion team. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Okay, got a couple of favourite, least favourite questions. Lisa Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, favourite WCW pay-per-view? Asked by at Red Tiger 1984. Honestly, I've seen about six ever. So... Halloween Havoc. Halloween Havoc. <laughs> <laughs> right, uncensored 96, maybe. <laughs> Regal Funley. <laughs> Slambery. Yeah, I'll, I'll also take Slamber. Yeah. Right. Slamber bra. Yeah. What was that WCW pay-per-view we watched? It, it was with Funley and Regal. Funley and Regal. Stunk it up. It was amazing. Oh, no. It was, <laughs> no, no, it wasn't, right? No. <laughs> you know me. So I'm a big, big, big mark for Funley and Regal. And put my hand on my heart and say, this match was big, stanky arse of a match. It was bad. Bad, bad, bad. What was this pay-per-view? Un- uncensored, uncensored 96 yeah it was like the the end the alliance the end Hulkamania yeah they had their own like was it two tier or three tier I think it was a three tier cage it's the one where they hit them with the pans in the face and it's like oh my god it's hilarious we have to review that show <laughs> I already sat through it. It was, it was <laughs> difficult. Oh my god! Oh, you should see Funly man. Oh my god, oh. his little pair of jocks like like Taz. Hmm onesie that are yep. bet on him he's got his green and black jacket with the fucking the, uh, Mad Max yeah. uh, mm-hmm. shoulder pad and a terrible grey mullet mm-hmm. and pedo moustache shocking <laughs> splicey that the picture to this because oh my god Fundy what, what were you was, thinking what was bad about that match versus all the other matches I've ever had was it was it not just the same thing it was thing? just long and slow long and slow yeah hence my yeah, point yeah. Yeah. no 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 <laughs> As in, it went on for 25 minutes and not the kind of eight minutes that you'll get in the Fed, yeah. you know? A st- whopper match. The, <laughs> was it No no Mercy 2000 or something? 2003, maybe? Great! 
Rip roaring, Steve. Mm-hmm. Rip roaring, indeed. <laughs> Eric Ells asks, "Hey guys, was just wondering how much merchandise do you own? I think he means wrestling merchandise." Oh, not that much anymore. I think I have more OSW merchandise than other wrestling stuff now. Um, I still have a ton of t-shirts that I never threw out. Man, whenever they started doing the kind of big WWE Euro shop, and whenever I go to States, I'd buy a shit ton of uh, wrestling stuff. So it's all stuff from kind of 2000 to 2004. Yeah. So I've a, I've all of Randy Orton shit from oh, like first, oh, three, first three years of it. Fuck. Here's oh, my yeah. basketball jersey. Oh, <laughs> three <laughs> generations of Orton. <laughs> <laughs> a Shane Mac jersey as well. Yeah. Um... I've got a shitload of TNA shirts. Yeah, I've got a few to, TNA um, shirts. We've been to some house shows. I was at a recording, and they were cool. They're they're good. They're good T-shirts. Uh, Christian ones were nice. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, uh, Joe guns. Yeah, the yeah. Forest guns. One. I the beer money T-shirt. Is it the one with Jay the dollar goes. bill? Yeah, I, saw, yeah, I, 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 I think that's a cheap one. Uh, yeah. Hasn't aged well. No, and of course we've got like it was awesome. Two thousand and seven. Jay went to. America is like June, and he was like, oh, "Do you want me to pick you up a belt?" So I was like, "Yeah." So he got me the JBL Brock Lesnar undisputed title, got Steve the Booker T the big gold belt, the big gold, and you already had the nineteen ninety nine uh, world Jubilee. title. Jubilee, <laughs> attitude era belt. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so that was awesome. We I always had think about was Austin's belt. Well, I was thinking of smoking skull, but anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, yeah. you're actually right. Yeah. And of course, Ms. Ark Henry. Don't you question and my boss. <laughs> <laughs> I've the he had the last ECW belt, which is awesome. Which is a gorgeous belt. Yeah. Really is a lovely belt. Just means fucking nothing <laughs> <laughs> in the grand scheme of it all. That was Hold a- on. That is what what's his face's belt? Uh Matt Hardy. Generico. No, no, Jack hold on. Swagger. No. Oh my god, I'm drawing a fucking blank here. Oh big Black guy. Yeah, I didn't want to say those words. <laughs> <laughs> no, fucking. Not shy it has stutter fella. Fucking Christian. Christian. Christian was his. Big Z. Yes, yes. Christian yes. Waltz, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, what's his name? Uh, Ezekiel Jackson. Big yeah? Zeke. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Big Zeke's belt. There you go. Um, a couple of questions about us as wrestlers. Don Gunno, Dan Slater, Patrick Whelan, Hardy Andrade, and Chris Hadley ask, if you were a staple in wrestling, what would your name, theme, gimmicks, and finisher be? So name is probably Ro, OC, J Hunter. Theme is Coheed and Cambria, is it? What's your theme? No, it was Lucan by Pearl Jam. I'm gonna look yeah. here. I'm gonna look here. I disappear. disappear yeah. yeah. Metallica. Metallica. Um, oh, well, bang a 2000s. Mine is Dark and Grey by Kid Rock. Yeah, five oh, bands. It's a good song. It's a good song. Gimmicks. Just a bit of a cunt who likes to beat people up. Yeah, kind of JBL-ish. Yeah. 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 Well, my gimmick essentially was Jay's sidekick who lost all the matches so Jay wouldn't have to. <laughs> And you were going to be a <laughs> top face, Steve. <laughs> Didn't need to break out the spreadsheets. <laughs> and I'm the guy that didn't have to lose because Steve did. <laughs> <laughs> you were Triple H circa 2003. Oh. Mine is the bicycle shorts. <laughs> Just regular shorts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and finishers? Steve, what's your, it's power bombs. The rundown power bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Named I, after your impact run down. Right? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I used to write the review yeah, for no, all yeah, the shows. No, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, and mine was the pain, which is a crippler crossface, and the what was my Olympic slam called? Rabbit slam. Rabbit slam. Yes, yeah. yes. A lot of Benoit. On there. There was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, when uh, not before you were married, of course, when we go right around town, met some lovely ladies. You'd introduced yourself as Intercontinental Champion Chris Benoit. Yeah, 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 yeah that did. Sure, I introduced myself to Andrew as Chris the first time I met her. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Still yeah. with you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
Oh, Jay, your your move, which is very really nice. Was it my finish? Oh, now elevated Texas Cloverleaf, which I called. And Fortnite. also the rack attack. Oh, that's right. God damn it, pre Bella. No, it's the other one, right? Yeah, Nikki, Nikki Bella, Nikki. the one with the rack. Yeah. Yeah. The, also the one with the arse. Yeah. The zero signal you called it, I think. The, it's a great name. It was a good name. Oh, yeah, because we control transmission. Mm, ah. It's very nice. The four play was your text clover leaf, which is good because of figure four. And then we did a combined crippler crossface text clover leaf, and we called it the four pain. That was awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bam, right there. Bam. That was some excellent <laughs> gimmicking, lads. That's really good. <laughs> oh, my God. Johnny Sanchez asks, how would we break up? Well, I I have a I have a you know yeah okay well now this is just specifically for the brig which I you know would be me and Jay and Steve you were touted to be in the brig never happened and I think you were affiliated like like yeah. Canyon in the Millionaires Club <laughs> <laughs> oh god so Jay hates. More than anything in wrestling, the tag team breakup angle. Because they're all shit. Because they're all shit. So Jay said when, when we would break up as a tag team, we'd just go our separate ways amicably, much like um, Ryback like Axel. Ryb Axel did a few months ago, wasn't it? I didn't understand that because, say, we travel together, we're best mates, we're gone, you know, sharing cars, whatever. So what happens now? Do we just sit in... We're still mates, but we don't talk to each other anymore. How does it work? Um, do we run in each other's matches? Jay couldn't answer any of these questions. So he asked me, how would we do a breakup angle? I said, it's quite simple. You know, Jay starts <laughs> acting the cunt and pushing people around. And I say, hey, you can't do that anymore. He said, give me an example. So I said, well, we could be in a cafeteria, for example. And one, one of the other wrestlers walks by and Jay trips him up and the tray goes flying. <laughs> Jay, so you want to do a cafeteria bully angle. That's what you're saying. <laughs> That's how OC grows to dislike Jay and turns on him. Oh, my God. <clears throat> well, you know, you'll kill my character. That's that's never in doubt. But I don't know how you'll get over because of it. How could you not? Who Do you remember your plan of how to get over and... <laughs> how to get over? Yeah, and how to... Win all my matches. <laughs> Tap Tight everyone submission. Out. Tap out Jay every week. <laughs> That was pretty much your plan. <laughs> it was <laughs> wow, beautiful. <laughs> oh, what a shame. Anthony McCarthy asks, who would be top face, top heel, and the mid carters on everyone's boy list? Uh, You'd have to be everyone's favourite boy. like. Yes, I would be like the guy on the losing streak that, just that people, people cheer for. Still get behind. Purr. Her. Her. Yeah, yeah, he could. Well, he's like a comedy character. He he's, wasn't his brown a comedy character. <laughs> he was getting massive push. Poison? Poison. He was over with the people that matter. <laughs> from fucking Raccoon City? Who's not going to get over from Raccoon City? Uh, Who would be more likely to be a face between me and you? I'd have to say me, because... Mm. Jay Hunter is yeah. not a face yeah. character at all. Could never be. But I'm also not a face. Cafeteria <laughs> face. <laughs> but like, I was like a bully heel and you were like fucking <laughs> Ripple H. <laughs> <laughs> Just ultimate, smarter than everyone, champion wins, holding down OOC. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Kunz asks, who would win in a match between JV1 and OOC? It depends who's booking. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Varis asks, who'd win in a shoot submission match with a sharpshooter between V1 and OOC? Uh, V1 would kill me. And what do you lads think of Canada? Uh, Canada's lovely. Um, yeah. The people and the country. Particularly Niagara on the Lake and Gananoque. Phenomenal mm. places and fishing there as well. It's You're amazing, yeah. 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 Never been to Canada. There were loads of Canadians in college, and they were all awesome. Oh, uh, Mark Vikotic asks, "What's your favorite and least favorite entrance music of all time?" <sighs> Gangrel will be up there. It's a great one. Mm. Um, oh, Bret Hart's theme. It's amazing. Yeah. Sexy boy. Yes. Amazing song. I think Jake Roberts' song is up there. Definitely. Uh, uh, Taker's 
Me, 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 Serenade me. Oh, maybe I hate China's song, but I also hate China. Is that like, don't treat you like a woman? It was so fucking stupid. Yeah. yeah. What are we going to treat you like? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> treat me like you know me. Um, write the censor. I liked it. Really? Yeah, I did. Well, it was also intentionally heat going on. Well. I love Booker T's song, by the way. Hmm. Uh, DDS Isaac Yankum was a horrific song that, oh yeah. gosh, shit but that's not really a song that's yeah, just yeah. intended that's just a audio uh, like. the spies take her coming out to rolling yeah, that didn't make sense a, I liked the song, song though, yeah. the song was fine for a time but I just didn't think it suited him at all honestly I love that, that song. version was way busier than the first version he came out to it was literally just a guitar riff. Yeah. In the bad joke. Big Ming in the background. Mini, 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 mini. That's Benoit. <laughs> Not a Benoit. It's just a go to, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Uh, Keith Thompson asks Do you guys agree that Shawn Michaels is Mr. WrestleMania and any favourite HBK matches? Surely Undertaker is Mr. WrestleMania. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, he is. He, he is. And like even in match quality, I think, by the end of his career, Taker had probably had more amazing matches at Mania than Sean did. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. Favourite HBK match? At Mania or uh, at Mania? In general. I can tell you what it's not. WrestleMania 25. <laughs> Most <laughs> overrated pay-per-view match of all time, probably. Him and is Taker do... I would have one? said uh, 12. WrestleMania 12. Most underrated, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes that, by the way. I'm like, here in my little flag yeah, where WrestleMania 12. It's amazing. It's so boring. Yeah. Well, my favourite's uh, Hell in a Cell 97. Uh, just an incredible storyline and athletic match. He did a Survivor Series match once where he was the... 2003. ...sole Survivor, a fucking crimson mask. That performance was outstanding. Yeah, it's the best Survivor Series match of all time. Yeah. Right? I actually like he he wrestled scene on Raw uh, like a week after Mania. Yeah, the one the hour yeah. in London, match. yeah, yeah. Fucking good. was it 07 or something? Uh, yeah, that was actually yeah, really good. That was fucking great as well. Yeah, he's so many. He's he's either number one or number two greatest in ring uh, wrestler of all time. So you know you can just keep it. It's like him and Angle are the two best Fine, right I've there. ever seen. Anyway, see, you know, like yeah, obviously yeah, Ben you know, Wilder. Like, there we go again. Yeah, Lex. <laughs> Martin Zamora asks, favourite celebrity used in an angle or competed in a match? Well, Arquette, of course. Yeah, mm, yeah it goes without saying, really. Lewis uh, Zeus. Hmm. Uh, but he wasn't, was he a star before? He <laughs> the was fridge freezer. Right? The fridge freezer. <laughs> fucking Baywatch jocks bet up his whole life. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gary Graham asks, got a few questions. I hope you guys answer any and all. This one is for V1. Favourite and least favourite Matt Hardy match? Ooh. Ooh. He had a great match with Ray Ray. Uh, I think it was WrestleMania 19. Yep. Uh, he had a one performance in a Royal Rumble with Shannon Moore was trying to keep him out. That was fucking magic. Keep him from getting eliminated? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh... I hate you, Jeff Hardy. <laughs> I hate you, Jeff Hardy. That Jesus Christ is fe- <laughs> both of his feuds with Jeff are both fucking shit. What did I tell you about tag team breakups, Steve? Oh, so Cafeteria awful. Bully, Jay. Yeah. Killing yeah. dogs and shit. Although- well, his dog died because his meth lab blew up. <laughs> Okay, it's home. <laughs> but in kayfabe, Matt oh, killed him. Oh, really? Matt blew up. Really? His That's meth a horrible thing. Yeah, 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 remember. Matt killed his dog in kayfabe. Ah. Uh, that's enough. Okay. Uh, as for you, Steve, uh, favourite, least favourite match from Lex Luger? <laughs> Quite the tapestry. Um, <laughs> I thought his match with Perfect WrestleMania 9 was very, very, very good. 
Um, <laughs> the one where Perfect bounced a round him for 40 minutes. <laughs> and then worst match, more because of the other people in the ring, was he was with British Bulldog as the superpowers, WrestleMania 11 against the Blues. Ah, Blues Brothers. Yeah, yeah. I, think that, I think that's mm. right, yeah. God. It wasn't great. Bad times. <laughs> it wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the lowest of Lex Luger. <laughs> Uh, Jay, how does it feel to be the one and only Golden Nogger winner for best host? Pretty damn. <laughs> <laughs> there will be no more awards for best host. No. no. <laughs> uh, Trent Divine says, "Hey, bros, what's your favorite taunts in wrestling?" Well, my favorite is Chris Jericho's lion tamer pose, where he steps on them and, go- and goes, "Come on, baby." Mm, that's a good one. Mm. Uh, I hate the cross chop, by the way. I uh, love Sean's pose. I think it's great. Is that a taunt or a pose? Oh, okay, so t- well, does it? Can you access it by pressing L one? Like that's oh, that's yeah, exactly. Oh, fair yeah. enough. If we use yeah. that, that is a pose. Then. Yeah. I go with Brock's just to, when he dances. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah, nice. It actually, might be like down on the left analog stick. <laughs> Brian Barton asks, "What do you guys think is the most overrated match and or moment of all time?" Taker, yeah. uh, Triple H, Hell in a Cell. <laughs> WrestleMania, whatever it was. Fortune Mirror No, no, no. Uh, actually, the Hell in a Cell match was good. No, the one the year before where they rolled out of the ring after like 10 seconds. Well, Hell in a Cell, they rolled out of the ring under a minute. I know, but it like, got yeah. good. It did. Yeah. I, I did okay. eventually. They were both it. excellent matches. No, 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 like I, uh, I'd argue that neither deserves to be on the list of the most overrated of all time. Sean Taker's matches both have the kick, uh, do a finisher, kick mm. out of it, take a break. Mm. You know, it, like it's, it was fine the first Second time you're match, watching it definitely. live, but when you're watching it again, it just plummets down. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. But I fucking hate to oh, kick out of your finisher. This X Seven happens every pay per view. Everyone kicks out of each other's finishers, so fucking who cares? You will have to hit your finisher twice now for people to actually believe it that the third time is gonna actually get a pinfall. Unless you drip in leave. <laughs> Mackenzie Strain asks favorite finisher and least favorite finisher. Boosty bonus for tag finishers. Uh, any cutter would be worst because it's overused. The RKO was amazing. The like, oh. maximum overdrive spinning move. Oh, jeez. Oh, I, I do not like that. Every mid Carter in 2007 used it. Exactly. <laughs> like, fucking... Oh, my God. Just absolutely everywhere. Uh, my favourite of all time finisher. Holy fucking shit. It's got to be super kick or stunner. Uh, favourite is super kick. Least favourite. Fucking bucks and the super kick party. It's like, it'll always get a pop and stuff, but... It's a finisher, it's not just a move, you know, and you're doing it a disservice by not using it as a finisher, like. Could you imagine the uproar if they Have started... Have never said that the books were, yeah, were, were yeah, no, 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 were, were not excellent wrestlers? Because they are, but holy shit, they're indie wrestlers. They're not WWE wrestlers at all, like. Well, I'm sure to say proud in that as well. Yeah. Could you imagine is fine. if the uproar of people, if they did 20 stunners in a match? Everyone would be like, fucking say, what are you doing? Disgraceful. But they're okay with stealing Sean's move. Yeah. So Al Snow use it, Lance Storm use it, Ziggler use it. Stop using the super kick. You can't have it. It's not yours. Get you your own move. move I miss uh, for a tag team moves? The spike pile driver. Or how, like, how many angles back in the 80s did you go, oh my God, he hit it with a pile driver. And, and Hogan's there for like eight weeks and he's wearing his fucking neck band and... That was great. That was back when an injury angle actually mattered. So you know? Do you like the Meltzer driver then? It's, I, it, is it a spike pile driver? Yeah, but your man does a flip off the ropes oh, well, as well. You can fuck right off then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Alexa Lewis asks, what are the best and worst wrestling biographies you've read? Best? I love Bischoff's one. I know it's crap. He's full of shit. Yeah, but, but that, it's, really it's an entertaining, entertaining read. Yeah. I was yeah. actually going to say that would be one of my worst. I feel mm-hmm. that's the book that has the most lies in it. Yeah, but it's it's good writing though. I think it's between Jericho's and Mankind's first books for the best. Uh, the, actually, the first wrestling book I ever read was The Rocks. It's whoa! <laughs> you stole my thunder, Steve. It's fucking The Rock says, yeah. Shit. Third person, a book written oh, in third person. Out. When he's talking about. 
non-wrestling shit, he's writing as Dwayne, and then when it's wrestling, he's writing as The Rock, and oh, it grates. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god, because he's burying everyone because yep. it's in character. He's like this job or Austin, and oh, I'm t- <laughs> you made the biggest star in the history of the business, yeah. Woo. Just on on worst um, regal. Don't oh, really? go near and don't go anywhere near it. I heard Angle's book was pretty bad as well, and Ray's, and Batista's. I have all three at home. I haven't read any. <laughs> but the best wrestling book, it's not uh, an autobiography. It's The Death of WC. Oh, yeah. It's it's absolutely. Phenomenal. Every wrestling fan should read it. Aaron Chris Joan asked, what was your favourite gimmick that needed a better wrestler? Mordecai? Mm. I don't think you need to be a good wrestler to pull off Mordecai. I just think you need to be given a chance. Well, you need to be big as well. I yeah, you need to yeah be he tall, wasn't you know? Kevin Vampire Dude, mm. not that tall. Like, who's Who's tall? Who could have done that? Cronus. <laughs> no, I'm not, who's tall? Not who needs work. <laughs> um, there's plenty. Fucking Eli Cottonwood. Oh my god. Your mustache. <laughs> mustache promo. Oh my god. <laughs> god, what a jobber. And Simon Diggins. We'll finish off with Simon Diggins asking his favourite promos. Obviously, Heyman, one night stand, 2005. Amazing. Heyman's promo on SmackDown as well. Heyman announcing ECW uh, <laughs> back <laughs> on SmackDown is incredible. Um, or is it Raw? I don't know. Tough Flair's promo after he won the Rumble in 92 was exceptional. Every Lex Luger promo. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah. Especially the t-shirt one. <laughs> Uh, 97 stuff with Brett and Sean when Brett was calling him lowest form of school. I, I still have it in my head oh Rock Mankind I quit their back and forth promises are just incredible nice I always remember Austin cut a promo on uh, Scotty 2 Hottie I think it was the first ever Smackdown that was great I think it was when he first broke out the Watt chant and he was super fucking heel and he's just like slapping the shit like slapping on the face going what what maybe maybe Excellent. Taz no, no, it was definitely Austin. No, no, no. Austin to Taz? Oh, I hope not. Mid mid. Because remember, Taz was, I'm, I'm the bit of a lone wolf in the invasion. I'm the only one not wearing an Austin t shirt and all that shit. Like, you know? Uh, but yeah. Obviously, Punk's pipe bomb promo was amazing. Like, yeah. Uh, Hogan Bash at the Beach. Punk uh, against The Rock as well. Your arms are too short to box with God. That whole promo was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that bad. Hogan promo with Bash of the Beach it was the angle the promo was very bad the new world organization <laughs> oh <laughs> my god <laughs> this is a rag sheet brother <laughs> cool alright that ends our wrestling portion for tonight so we'll catch you next time for some non-wrestling everything else you've asked us <laughs> And Vader and Bret Hart, but Austin went out. Bret Hart eliminated Stone Cold, and the referees didn't oh, see it. And Bret Hart is not going to stand for it. Maybe his feet didn't hit the floor, Ross. I saw it. I'm sitting right here, King. I didn't even see the monitor. Bret cannot believe it. Bret Hart eliminated Stone Cold, and now the referee saw it. The hitman, Bret Hart, is. And now, 1-800-COLLECT presents the 1998 WWF Royal Rumble. All right, we are back part three of the Q&A. Who's still with us? I don't know. Well, <laughs> Marks. <laughs> uh. Oh, so we got some food-related questions here. Will Serrano Jr. asks, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Ooh, it kind of depends on mood, but I think we go with mint choc. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 agree. You too, I agree you can have all the mint chocolate <laughs> excellent uh, mine without doubt is cookies and cream and it's my wife's favourite as well we were in a Chinese buffet place and she liked it that much that there was a bucket of ice cream 
But you know the way in the buffets, there's like buckets of ice cream, and it was down to the last bit of, you know, cookies and cream. And I went off to the toilet, and she stood there with the, the scooper in the bucket, so nobody else would come near. So there was a big queue. And she was kind of pretending to get, for about, like, it was a good maybe two, three minutes, pretending to get ice cream up. That's how much we like cookies and cream. Wow. Uh, would she not just have gotten whatever's in there and put it into a bowl? Like, I, what was I, I ask, often ask myself that question. <laughs> what was she doing? Like, I don't know. I love pretending. but I, I like really, it that yeah, she's yeah. doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, why was the cookies and cream not hot? <laughs> Jay? Uh, I don't really eat ice cream very often. Mm. Um, mm. I have a very simple taste. Simple man. Simple. Just simple. Not simple simple simpleton. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like some kind of snooty version of chocolate, basically. Chocolate plus something else. Mm. Mint. <laughs> <laughs> it's like chocolate and hazelnut or something. No, yeah, oh, good choice. Don't send us ice cream. <laughs> it'll, <laughs> me- it'll melt. He <laughs> uh, Healy asks, what's in all of your sweet presses at the moment? Oh. Well, it's just after Christmas, so a shitload. Actually, not that much, because I ate a lot over Christmas. <laughs> uh, I always have Mars bars, because a Mars bar and a can of Coke is, like, my absolute favourite treat in the world. Uh, so, like, Mars bars, Twixes, Snickers, and Kinder Bueno Whites. Nice. Love Kinder Bueno Whites. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, mostly chocolate Kimberly because I like to stock up at Christmas. They'd be my favourite confectionery. Mm. Probably just roses and uh, Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of roses, I got a fucking Cadbury's Heroes state of your selection this year. Yeah. There were five sweets that are the same thing. There was plain dairy milk. Winner. No, it's my like my least favorite chocolate bar in the winner. world. Double winner. There was flake, which I hate. Oh, yeah. There was twirl, which I also hate. They're the same as flakes it's, it's with more plain chocolate. Chocolate around it. Yeah, yeah. There was Toblerone, oh. which I actually like, but it's just more plain chocolate. And there was one other plain chocolate one as well. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Are you the kind of guy that loves the like chocolate and strawberry? Yeah. yeah. Chocolate strawberry, chocolate orange, chocolate caramel. We'd make a great team, Steve. We fucking <laughs> interlocking beards. <laughs> <laughs> Niall Fogarty asks, what's the best bar in Temple Bar? There's not many to choose from. Not if you're a local. No. If you're a tourist, then they're all great. Uh, the Foggy Jew. Yeah. I like the Vat House. Yeah? Yeah. Although it's very touristy, but I actually quite like it. Mm. It's a yeah, whiskey bar. Uh, and they have the footy on as well, so. Oh, mm. You like the Boiler House, Jay. That's the gay play, the gay thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the alley beside it. Yeah. <laughs> Will Pugh, Benjamin Sayers, and at Sporky Bard asks, What is y'all's favourite beer and whiskey? A uh, beer, Heineken, without question. And whiskey, uh, if I'm going to drink a straight, Jemison. And I'm going to mix it either Wild Turkey or Jack Daniels. There you go. Although I prefer Captain Morgan. Hmm. Well, Heineken and don't drink whiskey. Uh, do you drink any spirits? Jaeger bombs. That's about it. Jaeger's great. Yeah. Uh, I'll take either uh, Coors or Cerveza and actually well it's a rum but Captain Morgan Spice Rum is my favourite mm. and Jameson second favourite can't go wrong with it no nope. does angry up the blood though yeah <laughs> no does. no fucking uh, Southern Comfort turns me into Red Stephen I just yeah. lose the plot yeah can't, I just my friends no. will not l- let me drink it like. it's like me and JD That's yeah I don't drink JD but Southern Comfort not so much mm. it's a nice drink it's gorgeous with red lemonade, mm-hmm. which you can only buy in Ireland. Mm. And batch bread. <laughs> <laughs> what should I do and where should I go if I visit Ireland? Obviously red lemonade and batch bread to start. Yeah. With. yeah. We do have a lot of different types of bread you only get here. Mm. Potato farls. <laughs> potato cake. I love potato cakes. Actually, I got a Ballyar burger there about a week ago which is just a quarter pounder with a potato cake thrown on it it's amazing oh fuck in the middle I, I assume yeah yeah. disgusting 
Yeah, hold on, you just had a fucking burger. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a fucking potato in it. <laughs> We do eat a lot of potatoes. We do, we do. Uh, Staple part of the diet over here. Uh, Go to the Guinness factory. It's fantastic. Oh, they have the freshest pint of Guinness in there. It's gorgeous. And um, the Japanese gardens, really nice. Mm. Mm. Kildare, is it? Yeah, Yeah, around Kildare, yeah. 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 Oh, go to Pie Man in Temple Bar. Mm. That's where we got our thousand pies. If you... (laughs) If you've got a car, uh, go for a drive around the Ring of Kerry. I think it's one of the most beautiful places in Europe. All right, there's not some bird named Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of them, but you know. No, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Galway is a great town for going out drinking. It's my favourite place in Ireland, actually. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And there's castles and parks and shit, but you know, when you're Irish, you don't give a shit about that. Greg Hamilton asks, do you have a tea lady thus forming a Father Ted-like scenario? We should have a tea lady. Go on. Uh, There's cocaine in it. (laughs) (laughs) So what that would make you, Ted, probably you, Jack. Yeah, well, I'd be more angry than you two. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. so by default I'd have Mm. to be Dougal, which makes no sense that doesn't it's, make it's, any I'd sense I'd say you're more yeah. doodly though you know yeah maybe that would make maybe. you Jack yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you could be um, oh, you can be Father Dick Byrne oh I hate him then there you go <laughs> <laughs> who's the guy with the boring face <laughs> <laughs> do you mean a triumphant exciting <laughs> voice <laughs> Just because my balls drop for <laughs> Pope Francis Joseph McCluskey asks more talk about wind. <laughs> We're not allowed. <laughs> we can't get back into that because nah, you're just going to have nah. the exact same argument again. I don't think people understand that we've been having this argument a couple of times a year for what? Eight years now? Was it 2006? Six, six and a half years. It's unbelievable. Stuart Ratliff asks, not a question, but a big thank you to you guys. You are the best. Yeah. Jay is slightly better than us, though. He does all the work. <laughs> Just, but he's still only slightly better. But, you know, only slightly better, yeah. Can of coke to me. <laughs> Michael O'Grady, Mug, asks us, hey, how's it going, mate? Uh, describe the wrestling year of 2014 in three words. Ends in DQ. And how was your Christmas? Christmas is lovely. It was nice and quiet. You can be quiet... 11 months of the year December is when you should be going nuts you know and I did go nuts up until around Christmas week and then I actually couldn't drink anymore it's quite sad <laughs> <laughs> and tell me about your Christmas dinner Steve I get three Christmas dinners Jay I get my wife cooks one my mother-in-law cooks one and my mother cooks one and each one are great so I'm very happy various pros and cons of each dinner um, I couldn't say <laughs> 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 They're would, all equally amazing. Uh, yes, I yes. won't say. Yes. Yeah. But I do a thing. I do a thing. Every year, Andrea's mother cooks dinner. She says, give me a rating. Because you know, people are, when are you going to do your rating? You know? And I do my rating, you know, potatoes 10 on 10, 10 on 10, 10 on 10, 10. Overall score 7 on 10. And it gets a laugh every single <laughs> year. <Hey-oh. laughs> That's awesome. So you rate everything except movie Steve. I no, except, I, except wrestling, wrestling shows, yeah. yes. Yeah. And and what about you, Jake? Uh, it was great. I got to spend a couple of days with my family, uh, myself and Joe, kind of tag team Christmas dinner. So my parents aren't around in Ireland this Christmas. Um, that was lovely. Did you get your Power Rangers t-shirt this year? <laughs> uh, no Power Rangers t-shirt. No nice. uh, Rey Mysterio Batista calendar either. <laughs> <laughs> Two favourites as well. <laughs> So I did very well. Uh, Eddie Spaghetti asks us, Oasis or Blur? No, blur. neither. Oasis? No, Blur. Wow. Well, yeah. There you go. That's the three different answers. Yeah. Uh, Michael Martin Small asks, what does OSC think of the new Weezer album? I only just got it and haven't listened to it yet. But uh, if it's anything like their previous like two, three albums, it's not going to be great. It sucks when bands get old yeah, no. and just change, isn't it? No, I'll, st- I'll still buy all their stuff. Like, looking at you, Silver Chair, Young Modern. Uh, oh, yeah, had Straight Lines on it. It was one of their best ever songs. I don't know. Listen to name. it again, man. Yeah. Second song of the album. 
Brennan Francom asks, is there any other films that you guys disagree on as much as The Happening? We, oh, well, myself and Jay adore Lord of the Rings and Steve hates it. Equilibrium. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. That was me. Are we going to have to do that movie now? Well, not without Niall. That was me and Niall against you two for that was Equilibrium. So funny. Yeah. And but then again, you, The Happening can, was... It was us two against you. That's so. true. Yeah. Well, can you guess who liked Equilibrium or who didn't? It wouldn't like be pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no prizes. Um, yeah, and at that Desperado twenty five asks, is there any other movies that you want to review now that the happening has happened? And James Gillaney asks, uh, suggests X Men three. Oh, the last stand. But we all don't like it, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it wouldn't be. No. Oh, give me an excuse to do Juggernaut again. That that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars would be fun as well. It's Plinkett's. Uh, uh, no, well, we he hasn't done. Yeah. What about the original trilogy? Then? Uh, what can you say? It what? It's shit. What the prequels is where it's at. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I want people to know that je- half of Jedi was shit. Half of it was amazing. No, everything no. with Luke was great, but the fucking furry furry Muppets. Throwing rocks at the stormtroopers yeah, and like I'm absolutely just destroying the character of Han Solo by turning him into a lovely bloke at the end. And his his storyline ends at the start of Jedi when he gets uh, rescued and it's like, oh, how is it going? Yeah, we're, we're great. Cheers. That's it. You're done now. What do you do? I think he opens up a door yeah, he does, on Endor. Yeah, he does nothing for the rest of the film. It's my favorite Star Wars movie. No, it's. It's I know the, 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 the that's yeah, great yeah. that's fucking tough but come on it's my third favourite third most favourite movie of all time 10 out of 10 one of the only three <gasps> yeah man can't be improved 10 on 10 perfection Wicked the Ewok <laughs> I like the fucking Ewoks <laughs> <laughs> the best I, I really loved the whole Luke uh, dark gimmick with the black shit I thought yes. that was the best part of it was the movie. very wrestling wasn't it yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's, mm-hmm. Bring it all back to wrestling. Any other films you'd like to review? I think uh, slows, I think it could be fun if we did uh, Dark Knight. Ah uh, no, I don't dislike. Now it. that you've ousted yourself, <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I, like I like the movie. Never said everyone I didn't that doesn't like the say movie. it's great is a hater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alan Young, Frasier or Seinfeld? Only ever watched Frasier. Uh, I would have watched Frasier more than Seinfeld, yeah. Yeah, I'm Seinfeld, actually. Uh, Frasier's fine. I don't really like Frasier, but I like Niles a lot more. So. Um, yeah, Frasier's a bit of a cunt, actually, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> I know, he's, that's he's the gimmick of the show. I'm a footy-duddy and so, yeah, gets into situations that he's uncomfortable with. I don't care. You're not a nice person. <laughs> it's the Over here, you're not funny either. But I like Niles, he, although he's stuffier and he's got a kind of younger brother complex. Ooh, what's the deal with airline food? Uh, <laughs> Chipster Whitley, favourite horror movie or B-movie? Horror well, movie, Paranormal Activity 2. Hmm. A J recommendation? I don't know my favourite, but the film that scared me the most ever was Candyman. Um, so I'll go as uh, Stephen King's The Shining, then uh, The Ring US remake, 2002, then It, Stephen King's Yes. I, I actually don't like The Shining as a film, but I think the problem is that I watched it after reading the book. I was just like, more boil needs more boiler. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Allard Thirtle asks, "What's your favorite mode of transport, land, sea, or air?" I hate. Well, airplanes aren't bad. I hate airports. Mm. So mm-hmm. yeah. anything to do with air travel. When's the last time you've been on a boat, though? When's the last time I got the boat? Hey, I, I can't remember. She's been a long I got time. Got the boat in. <laughs> 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 That's when I was on a boat. It was two thousand ten and. It was misery. It was mm. coming back from France and it was like 18 hours of this mm. up and down, sick as a dog. Does that count like kind of small boats that has like, you know, kind of six people? Like a little kind of personal cruise ship? Because that was awesome. A cabin. A cabin, yeah. That's yeah, what you want. Cool, yeah. well, trains used to be awesome when you'd have smoking carriages, get your cans. Fucking, That was a good way to go yeah. from Dublin to Cork. The Enterprise going up to Belfast used to be able to uh, buy your cans on it. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Oh, we got some football questions. All right. Uh, Tom Wilson asks, what football team do you lads support? I am a Leeds United supporter. Spurs. Newcastle. Happy days for you with fucking Harry Kane running the muck. Uh, listen, give give the young lads a chance. He's going to be whipped up. There's no way you're keeping him, though. I think he's there for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. 
Did, did you think that way with Bale? No, God no, Jesus. Yeah. Dominic Shenzier, Lewis, asks, what footy league do you follow the most? The Premiership? Championship. Fucking Leeds. Uh, what do you think of the Bundesliga, our national team? He's talking about Germany. The Bundesliga, our national team, and their World Cup campaign in 2014. They were terrible. Worst team in the competition. They were dreadful, weren't they? No, that okay. match against Brazil. Oh, my oh, God. Useless, weren't they? Useless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, of course. They're I mean, amazing. It was, it was brimming since the last World Cup. Um, and... I didn't pick them to win. You, you. They were I your picked picks. Brazil and Germany were my two picks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the the German league, it's it's a one horse race, right? Bayern. Yeah. It? The one thing I do like about the German league is that it's the most like the Premier League out of Europe. Like I, ca- I can't watch Spain or Italy because mm-hmm. it's diving and just fucking looking for reasons to go down the ground and all that stuff. But yeah. Uh, the German national team are phenomenal. It's one of the best mid- midfields I've ever seen. Mm. Conor O'Boyle, who, how awesome is Eamon Dunphy? The he's, best pundit ever. He's all of the awesome. Yeah. He's all of it. He's also a huge troll. Like. Of course yes. he is, but that's yes. half the fun. Yeah. Uh, you're not watching them for in-depth yeah. analysis on football. You're yeah. watching them to be entertained. Yeah. You know? as opposed like, I need to, people to know that. <laughs> as opposed to BBC, uh, you're watching them to get people in trouble you know oh but did he really dive did he oh was it no the, the analysis on BBC is second to none you think Gary Lineker's good he doesn't analyse no but he is the one who is pulling the show along and yeah, and but then you got people like Danny Murphy I think Murphy's great Phil Neville excellent know. they're both excellent uh, Stephen Scanlon asks who is the best at FIFA me by a country mile I say I wouldn't say by a country mile I mean in terms of an American of, mile in terms of passing and movement and keeping the ball, and probably even shots, I generally beat you, but you just always win because your defense is incredible. Concentration. But then you, we, we'll play again. It's, he just soaks it all up and catches me on the break, and then I can't break him down. Sounds done. You have a tidy back door. <laughs> <laughs> will Pugh asks, who are OSE and V1's go-to teams when they play their pre-recording FIFA games? Real. Not in this year's I picked Juve actually. Okay, no. They're excellent. Real should be banned by the way. They're an absolute cheat team now that they've Ronaldo and Bale. Bale. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bayern are pretty good as well, by the way. Gabriel Degney asks, Will you when are you guys gonna record a session of FIFA games? I want to see OCC destroy it. Jesus Christ, lads. Third person. Yeah. <laughs> um, Third person. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I'd need to like buy a PS4 so we can record it, I guess. I don't like carrying my expensive consoles around with me. Mm. Josh Schwartz says, are you guys big MMA fans? And how big is Conor McGregor in Ireland? One of us is an MMA fan. That'd be me. Uh, Conor McGregor is pretty fucking big. He gets on to, like, national shows. So, you know, the Late Late Show, he was on the countdown for the New Year's thing. Actually, I'm going to give out to him because he was a massive cunt about that show every person on it gave their money to charity and he demanded to be paid uh, that's a scumbag move unfortunately he's going to kill Dennis Seaver but I hope he gets Frankie Edgar after it and gets taught a lesson um, I'd be more of a fair weather MMA fan if there's a big match I'll go watch it I have to watch Jones fight I haven't seen it yet that's good yeah. that's good um, but everyone I love in MMA uh, that gets me into it keeps leaving like Brock Lesnar, Randy Couture, Sean Shirk as well, that roidy monster is like, ah, oh, you got busted. <laughs> Chael Sonnen, uh, Spider Silva, they're all fucking gone. Like, yeah, you know? Silva's back in a couple of weeks and Brock is going to join back in the summer. And uh, where is uh, GSP? Mm. Is he bringing his kid in the waitress with him? Like, you know? <laughs> the fuck? Like, He's still out know? looking for aliens, I think. Yeah. All right, let's just uh, finish off last couple of questions here. Edgar Velasco, Patrick Snyder, and Stephen Rafferty ask if we'll review wrestling video games like WCW Super Brawl or Rage in a Cage, that kind of thing. I'd give it a go and see how it turns out. I suppose the problem is capturing footage. I don't have any of that yet, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, you know... Like a desktop capture and we play an emulated version of it. Yeah? Mm, I've suddenly got all scruffy about emulated. <laughs> 
this is clearly moving at a frame per second too quick. It's not the... Um, Authentic... Ver- What's that? Oh, I have to get... That's my high horse outside. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Betts and Arturo Hernandez asked, what's your favourite video game of all time? Super Metroid. Although it could be pushed to say Metroid Prime. Non-football game GTA San Andreas. I'll say A Link to the Past. And to answer least favourite, I don't play bad games. Yeah, that's true. I avoid them like the fucking plague. Deadly Premonition? Didn't we play that? Oh for my god. And it was supposed to be fun broken, but it was just shit. One of those games that they say it's so bad it's a 10. It's like, no, it's a fucking minus 10. It's, it, it doesn't work. It's broken. Tony Stark asks, oh, uh, what games have the best music? Metroid and Metal Gear. Any kind of less obvious ones? Silent Hill. God, Shadowrun Returns is an amazing soundtrack. <laughs> Oh, it's fucking brilliant. Shadow of the Colossus is a stunning soundtrack as well. And he zips out the game. Mario, obviously. Last of Us is pretty pretty good. Yeah. That'll, that'll do. Timothy Coelho asks, Where has V1 been on Destiny? My back is healed up and I can carry him through a new raid. Ah, shit. It's magic. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I got pissed off playing it so I needed the break. This guy is awesome. He fucking carried me through this game for a long time. I'll be back on again. I'll be back on it. Uh, when did you quit playing Destiny? Uh, the day after the DLC came out. Uh, when I realised I was going to have to grind up to level 32, despite having only finished grinding up to 30. And the thoughts of it, like, it took me like four months. Because I've only got one character. And the really hardcore guys have three of the same. So they, so they, so they can get three times as many upgrade stuff. So, yeah, that's, I just... Man, I put 200 hours into it and then I thought of putting another 80 hours into it. Or just, no, fuck off. Holy shit, that's incredible value for money. I've never played oh a game. Oh my god. That it's, the, it's the game I've played the most ever. Wow, that's yeah. huge praise. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a couple of a couple of final questions about The Simpsons. Mm. Luke Gehoigen. Luke Gehoigen. <laughs> Luke, he's going to hate me for that. God, Is he Gehoigen. Irish? No, it's not Gehoigen. Uh, it's G O G U E N. Gogwin. Luke Gogwin asks, who are you? What are you doing here? Do your research. Uh, David Logan asks, which do you think is more important, hard work or stay to it this? <laughs> are there any real questions? <laughs> Robert Ralph uh, Whiteley asks, is there any chance to track a bend? Not in your life, my Hindu friend. Jacob Katz asks, will you guys review the Simpsons movie? No. Uh, probably not. Like, no. no. I didn't really like it. No, I didn't. I, didn't no. like, I don't want to. No. I thought the first half an hour was good and then mm. off cliff. Liam Hill asks, uh, favourite treehouse horror story? Mine's number five with the shinning. Uh, the Omega Man. Mm, that is a great one. Which yeah. one is that now? It's like the Omega Man or I Am Legend. Oh, it's the... the, the See you in hell, Churchy. Yeah. 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 i probably have to say... Don't I, you pay for those coins? I don't know the name of it, but the one where Homer has the cloning machine in his um, yeah. hammock. Wow, that's yeah. actually really recent. It is. Well, relatively season 14 or that's something. A, yeah. that, I absolutely it's love good. that. And then Peter Griffin is in it. Uh, mm, he's one yeah. of the clones. Yeah, that's right. Also, the one with the toaster where he goes back in time. Yeah. Um... Is, we should probably do these favourite episodes another day yeah, yeah that's that's right. pretty good um, we can make an actual episode of yeah, it yeah maybe yeah. if you're up for it sure. yeah um, at or Bloomberg 3 um, as favourite Simpsons season I think season 6 it's just incredible I'm not one to judge it by seasons I, I just watch a show I pretend like yes I do. <laughs> uh, post two the, the season had Scorpio on, on that's nine I think there we go season nine yeah. it's weird sometimes you see shows that you swear like season two and actually in season six like Bart the Vigilante or, you know like the cat burglar is season six I only and, watched that one the other day it's actually. amazing yeah Okay, and finally, final question is both from Steve AFC10 and AEW Review ask, on the itchy and scratchy CD-ROM, is it possible to get out of the dungeon without using the wizard's key? What the hell are you talking about? Steve, before you go, I've got something for you. Go on, tell me. 
Got I, I won't guess. You, you oh, you'll, you'll never guess. Uh, <coughs> uh, one of our amazing bras, Eric, has gotten you a present. Fuck off. Yeah. But he heard of your plight, and he thought he'd help you in the only way he could. So do you want to just call what you're... What you see this here? is from Eric. Is it Coran or Choran? From Texas. Fuck off. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's amazing! A fucking hard drive? A fucking terabyte? That, that's, that, that size? Okay, this dude, I've got to do something special with this guy, that's amazing. I am... I'm touched. Not by... not in a dirty way. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir, that's fucking incredible. Man, that must have cost a fortune, there's no Holy fucking... Shit. There's no power needed for it. Mmm, it's like a passport kind that's of thing. amazing. Fuck you, Niall, you can keep it. <laughs> if uh, somebody wants to send me $10. <laughs> that is so nice. That's incredible. What a nice guy. Yeah. What a nice guy. All right, that'll end it for our three-part Q&A, parts four, five, and six. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, sorry if you didn't get to your questions, and hopefully it's in the first three parts of the Q&A. So we'll catch you next time for... Oh! <gasps> Bam, bitches! <laughs> Next time is the 2015 Golden Nogger Awards oh, yeah. ceremony. So we'll join us next time for that. So signing out tonight, it's OC. Fairly. V1. Pick up boot. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. I was thinking of Winter Ringe <laughs> We have those shows. Are we actually haven't done that yet. <laughs> We reviewed so when we did some game. I think it was Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs. You were giving out about the soundtrack. Oh, God. Has like 10 hillbilly songs about Chicago. It's punk. It's, re- it's like punk 70s punk songs. And it's like, oh my God. Of all of the rock, I hate punk the most. That wasn't a wrestling quote. Yeah. <laughs> it was like it. We go. And that's it here. And that's it here. Oh, oh what bar has Jay given me? He's given me Kona Crush, bra. A double decker. It's your favorite, isn't it? Yeah, I love double deckers. Double deckers and toffee crisps are my two favorite bars. And I had a toffee crisp yesterday. Alright. So perfect. Actually, gonna have that when I go home. <laughs> <laughs>